Hi, it's me, Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut. Eve! Space plane! Why can't I get over this? I'm still refining the Pants Destroyer, my beautiful, wonderful Eve space plane. And um, I think today is just as good as any day to keep working on that. So thanks for tuning in on this episode of Watch Me Play Kerbal. Three, two, one, zero, and Hip hip everybody, it's a beautiful day here at Kerbal Space Center. Well, look at this, we're gonna pop into our uh, airplane hangar here and we're gonna pull up. I, so I have to admit something. I have not been perfectly honest and I have been working on this off air. Um, I also have been working on this on air. So I kind of have two versions. I have a Mark II and the original. The Mark II I can't quite get to work yet. Um, it's, the problem is it doesn't quite have enough Delta V to make it off of Eve, which is, I don't know, some people might want to leave Eve. I'm one of those people. But the original Pants Destroyer can leave Eve with plenty of room to spare, actually. Believe it or not, this thing um, ended up with a thousand meters per second of Delta V left over um, by the end of, by the time it gets into Eve orbit at a fairly decent Eve orbit, too, like 150 by 150. Um, so it's not even like it just barely ekes into orbit. It's got a thousand meters per second to spare in Eve orbit, which is crazy. So what I want to work on here, um, I realize when I inflate these babies, there's a lot of overlap. And I might be okay to get away with just three of them. I was able to do that on my other one, um, on the Mark II version. And I'm just trying to clean this thing up. I really, I'm just, I'm just trying to refine it, make it less parts count, you know, make it as clean and as beautiful and sleek as it possibly can be. And I think this is going to help a lot. I also think it will look better if I maybe just make it so there's only one um, steel girder thing. Let's make sure that when it inflates, it doesn't, yeah. I mean, why not? We have, I was nervous. I think, you know, the further out these massive drag this produces a lot of drag while entering the atmosphere. The further out it is, the better it is as far as being effective and keeping it uh, face first or pointing the right way. But in the reality of things though too, uh, as long as it's at the back of the craft, it's probably fine. And that just looks so much cleaner. That's the thing is I'm so trying to ride that line between form and function. And that's what I'm working on today. So. The other thing I realized is I can probably get rid of this tail stabilizer. I'm pretty sure I can make it there with without this. Um, I also think I'm going to tweak the internal payload a little bit. Now here's the deal. By getting rid of, so I have this, it's a three stage rocket right now. The way this thing works is, is it uses the wings to pull itself off of the ground on Eve, right? But then the crazy thing is, um, Obviously it's not, so the engines it uses are not efficient or they don't have a high enough thrust to weight ratio to actually get it off. Say we were standing on its butt, it couldn't even pick itself off, up off the ground. So that's why we use wings. That's, we're trying to use wings to their advantage, what they're meant for on a, on a planet like Eve that has a very thick atmosphere. We're trying to use that to our advantage. Um, so we can gain a lot of elevation. Bef we, we can get up to like three or four, if we start at like a thousand meters, we can gain two or 3000 meters of elevation um, before we even get to one to one thrust ratio. So think about that. We're actually able to gain um, gain some elevation just because those wings are on there. So if those wings weren't on there, it would just be sitting on the ground. Hello, internet dinosaur. How's it going? Thanks for tuning in. What are you up to today? I think you know what we're up to. Refining this beautiful, beautiful beast. I'm also just kind of trying to tweak some of the things, like I don't think I need quite this many batteries. I'm just trying to be more, more realistic, tidy some things up around here. Um, I'm gonna go with like four of these and watch our Delta V slowly climb. So that's the other thing though, is we don't need all this Delta V, right? We're, we're a thousand over by the time we get into orbit. That's fantastic. It's also overkill. Um, and I like to kind of keep things not overkill. So look at right here in this configuration, it has 4,535 meters per second of Delta V. I think we could simplify things. I bet we can get almost that same amount of Delta V 
just by getting rid of this engine and this decoupler, I'll bet you anything, um, it'll increase the thrust to weight ratio of of this stage of with the aero spike engine, and it'll also simplify things. And I'll bet you. So wait, what did I say? Four thousand. 4,535, watch this. Let's delete these two things and see where we're at. 3,678, so we are, that is quite a bit less. Our thrust to weight ratio did rise a little bit, so maybe we could find a small fuel tank to replace the weight of that engine. So that engine that we had on there and the decoupler probably weighed about, yeah, 0.5. So if we replace that with just fuel, I wonder how we're doing then. 3,811, same thrust to weight ratio. Um, simpler, just a three stage rocket. Actually, I'm gonna just tidy this up and not have, why do I have two stages like that, you know, that look the same. Let's just see what this looks like. 4,200, a much lower thrust to weight ratio. Maybe that's a little overkill. Um, let's see here. Does this, this is what we started off with and that, isn't it? Let's just do something in between. Is that the same? Nope, that's a little bit less. 4,000 meters per second. We end up with over a one-to-one -one thrust to weight ratio. We're shipping the weekend gods for ending the week. I hear that. I'm 100% behind you on that. Yep. Even though, you know, I, I don't really have a nine to five anymore, so I can't really complain because most days feel the same. Um, I actually have, haven't had a nine to five in nine years, but I still, I still enjoy the weekend because you do just get a shut off, um, even in, you know, in self-employed land, um, at least when I'm not shooting weddings now, I do get a shut off. And that was the thing that was crazy hard about shooting weddings was your weekends became work. Um, so that's, I'm, I'm glad I'm kind of done with that for now. Done with that portion of my life. Okay. So that adds an absolute or detracts a crap ton of Delta V. Um, but that's going to be necessary for docking. So I'm not going to totally take that away from it. Um, and this also, don't forget by having monoprop up in here, um, that does add a lot of Delta V actually to our, this very upper stage. I mean, that's probably five or 600 meters per second worth of Delta V just because, you know, the RCS thrusters can still pff, change velocity. So, all right, let's stick this all back together. See where we're at here. That's so crazy. Now it says 6,000 6, something. It's kind of what I was doing the other day when I was working on this. It changes the calculation some for some reason very, very badly. Let's make sure all the engines are staged properly still. Yep, yep, okay, that looks right. Decouplers, okay. This better be those side decouplers. Let's close this up for now. Oh, I should probably make sure and auto start all this stuff. I know that's bit of a no-no, but at the same time, we don't want it jiggling. Oh, hi. Never seen that happen before. Okay. Now what are you doing? Excuse me, friend. Okay. <laughs> Revert. There we go. Don't know what that was. That was very, that was very fun. Waking up on a Friday. Coming to party. All right. Let's go ahead and auto strut this guy down too. And I'm still going to, um, I better actually auto strut one of these to the parent part or the, hmm, I guess we'll keep that on for now. Yes, that's correct, Internet Dinosaur. So this thing lands on Eve. So this will have a, a giant, when it leaves um, Kerbin eventually, um, it'll leave Kerbin um as a plane, basically in like a space shuttle fashion with a big external fuel tank that will feed it fuel all the way into uh, orbit around Kerbin. And then I got to figure out a good way to either push it or tug it or something all the way to EVE. Once we get to EVE, it's going to use um, aerodynamics to slow down and eventually land. And then once it's on EVE, hopefully we haven't used up all that fuel and we are able to take off then from EVE and it's going to be fantastic. Um, it's also very scary. Oh, look at this. That's, wait, nope, that's those. Where are these, friends? They're there. That's this. This needs to go there. Where are these? Okay, what's this? I can't find, that might be something in here that's out of order. 
What's this? That's that, and that's probably this. I'm just trying to find... <sighs> There's two... Oh, those are those weird ones that got stuck here. There's like two... That's right. We have two things down here that we don't want. Maybe if we get rid of it like this, maybe they'll disappear. Nope. Is it this one? Aha, there we go. Goodbye. Cleaning things up. Refinement. The world of refinement. Okay, I'm going to also double check that this stuff is all tied together nice and tight. Really makes uh, really makes this thing fly better when it's you know not going to be shaking around like crazy and stuff. So it's still funny that for whatever reason, it's miscalculating our delta V. It went from 9,000 to a lot less than 9,000. 7,000. It makes me a little scared. I'm not entirely sure why it's calculating it like that, but I'm pretty sure it works. So I think we should, now that we've messed this all up, let's go ahead and say Pants Destroyer Mark um, Mark 1.5. So we still have the save from Mark the original, and this will just kind of be a different iteration of the same version. Also, I think I can get rid of these guys and put a much smaller version back on. Something like this. And then push these babies out. Pull them out a little bit. I'm going to make it so they just kind of kiss the face here of this. Pull this out a little bit. Something like that. Because this is the only reason this heat shield exists is to protect this decoupler from popping off. This thing likes to overheat. It experiences a lot of um, aerodynamic effects when it's coming in through EVE. So we had to add those literally just, <laughs> just to make it survive EVE re-entry. Um, EVE re-entry is nasty. Okay, so those pop off at the same time as that. Yep, yep, yep. Check, check, check. All systems go. Save. Let's make sure Jeb's not in the driver's seat. Oh, it's poor laddie. Where is Jeb? Oh, he's probably out there crapping his pants still after that ride I gave him the other night. Okay, let's get ready to pop this on over to Eve. This is still just a development phase. So once I get make sure we can properly do a nice clean EDL, an entry descent landing on Eve, and once I know for sure we can easily get off the surface of Eve, then guess what? We uh, Then we'll send it to Eve on a proper mission. But for now, we are loading up the cheat menu and just getting there in a hurry because we're still just in development. There's, I'm sure, other ways. Eve is just such a nasty, nasty thing that some things that are sometimes tried and true, um, things that you've done before, they just won't work, especially now in 1.2. They've changed the game around the physics a decent amount, and Eve got changed, but I feel like Eve changed a lot. Okay, so I'm not entirely sure where we're going to land. Currently, this is kind of in daytime over the... Uh, most of the ocean is visible. I could try dangerously to try to land on something like that, but I'm not good at predicting where we're going to land either. Um, and neither is Mech Jeb, but we could, we could at least, we could try. I think, because that's actually a really high altitude area, so that would be wholly advantageous to us. Um, we might as well try. What are you guys up to today in Mission Control? Anyone have anything exciting? Any exciting plans this weekend? Is there a set date for launch or whenever you finish tuning it? Um, probably more whenever I finish tuning it. Maybe if maybe if this ends up being something really exciting and really cool, I'll make a big hype out of it and try to do like a launch date, launch time. That'd be fun. I'm typically not that kind of person. I don't like to plan out that far. Um, but I could see doing something like that just for just for a little hype train. Might be cool. Okay, control from here. Quick save. Oh, wait. Um, we're going to load up these engines. Inflate those heat shields. Turn off that one set of engines that's slightly less efficient. Isn't that crazy now we get up here and it tells me we've only got 5,444 whatever meters per second left. That's crazy. Um... Open up MechJub. There is a landing guidance that is iffy at best, but we're going to try it. 
Let's start deorbiting here. I'm getting real confused with all this hideousness up on the screen. Mech jab, you're such a mess. Is this not? Oh no! I inflated these too early and now we can't actually go anywhere. Please tell me I quick saved before inflating them. Nope. Great. Just fantastic. Alright. I don't even know if we have enough forward facing. That's not going to slow it down like at all. That's going to be terribly inefficient. Well, here we go. Let's face it like this. Use the top facing RCS to deorbit. This is so inefficient because these RCS ports are not very um, good at doing this. They aren't. They don't have a very high specific impulse. But here, let's hold radial in. We'll hold this vector here. Weird. So notice, maybe. Keeps like cutting out on me, that's weird. So notice we are lowering our periapsis here. Why does it do that? Where's monoprop being drained from? Because if I remember right, I shut these down. I don't want it to, I don't actually want it to waste any monoprop. It's just blowing that off into the atmosphere. That's stupid. Great. <laughs> All right. Where's it still burning monoprop from? From the capsule, probably. There we go. Capsule's out of monoprop. What a waste. What a waste. So now we got to get this thing down below, like, a ways below um, 90 is the atmosphere. So that's so weird that just, like, randomly will stop. This thing's acting all funny. All righty. Well, time to deorbit here. Here we go. We're starting to enter some Eve atmosphere almost. If it would let me keep going on this. Enter target. Oopsies, not that. We want to see. Show landing predictions. There we go. Now we're going to see where this is predicting we'll land. The only thing is it takes into account our current direction and everything. So I feel like this is, this is the least efficient way to ever do this. Don't judge me. Okay, whatever. We're just going to we're going to just see if we can even survive re-entry now. I guess if we happen to get to the point where we're landing, we'll send a new one up there. But here we go. Let's speed this part up. Let's turn on the laser beams. Otherwise known as the aerodynamic overlay. This will show us our aerodynamic forces. We should have no problem keeping this thing pointing nose forward. Um, we used to have a hard, hard time making that happen. But nowadays with these big old things in the back creating a lot of drag, it really helps keep the, the space plane going forward. And I've probably explained this before if you've tuned in, but that's not how you would normally re-enter um, an atmosphere with, with a space plane. A space plane would typically come in like at a 25 degree angle and let all the aerodynamic forces hit that whole big broad surface area on the bottom of it. Um, unfortunately, for whatever reason, EVE has become so nasty now with such crazy atmosphere that that is basically impossible. Um, and if you go straight in like I'm doing normally, you blow up, Pfft, no matter what. And if I come in at an angle, loses control, blows up. Pfft, so it's pretty pointless. So what I've found out, the only way to work is to pretty much use these big, ugly mushrooms on the back to basically act like supersonic parachutes. So they work in the upper atmosphere. They don't get ripped apart to shreds. And they hopefully slow it down enough to keep this thing from cooking itself on reentry. That's the theory, at least. We'll see. All right. Here we go. Things are starting to just start to cook up a little bit. Wow, it missed that prediction, predicted landing by about a million. Oh, it looks like we're going to land right there. 
and I have no idea how much altitude there is at landing. So we're going to be landing in the dark if we make it, which is always exciting. Luckily this thing actually flies pretty well. You can actually glide long enough that it's not as terrifying. Again, EVE has a lot of atmosphere, which is the same thing that destroys it in the sky or up here in the atmosphere. It also is the same thing that um, helps it, can potentially help it. Actually, it's, it's, it's annoying because it takes a lot of force to get off of EVE because of its extra soupy thick atmosphere too. Um, it has a lot of gravity. It also has um, a lot of atmosphere, and those two things are make it very, very difficult to get off of. So, yeah, so EVE is just... It's considered one of the hardest planets to to get on and off of, you know, and kind of one of the bigger challenges. So I'm that's why I'm trying to exploit its aerodynamics. If I can get the you know the wings to do their job, I wish so badly that the wings would do their job on re-entry, but for whatever reason, can't make that work. So hopefully this works. Now if things really start to cook up. We go from a nice medium rare to that super spicy uh, charbroiled look here. Um, and it starts, all these gauges are going to start going crazy by like 3,000 meters per second. That's when things are crazy. I hope that we have enough drag in just these three heat shields. I had five, but they had so much overlapping that the Venn diagramness of them um, was, seemed like there's a lot of extra overlap. So we'll see. This is, you know, this is that whole tweaking it, making it more efficient, fewer part counts, um, cleaner, more streamlined. I'm all about aesthetics, so... That's that's kind of where we're going with this guy. All right, making me hungry for some pizza. Always. Let's see how this baby does. So let's see if it, like I said, this is gonna be the hardest part. If it survives this this part, then we're we're okay. And the only reason, you know, the obvious answer is why don't we put a heat shield in the front? I I said that stupidly, like people would say that if they're stupid. That is not a dumb suggestion. That's the correct answer, actually. Um, but the deal is, is the center of drag or the the mo the, your center of pressure. So wherever the most amount of pressure. So these things provide a lot of drag. Um, if you put that up front, it, that wants to go. That wants to go last. It wants to go behind everything. So imagine like an arrow or a a badminton, um, wherever that the center of mass. And wherever the center of drag is, um, the center of drag always wants to go last. So if you put this up front, all that ends up happening is the thing ends up just going crazy. Look at this. That's so close to exploding. Like literally just sitting there waiting to explode. Don't do it. No! I asked politely and there it goes. Torn apart. So that answers that. But you know what we might be able to do? That was an issue with the... Um, that actually seemed to be an issue with the heat shields that we had covering up those things. Because I believe it was, yeah. All right, let's go to the Space Center. I'm sorry that we had to kill that one off. I, I'm sorry that you had to witness that. That's oh, very graphic, very sad. Moving onward. So um, the deal is, I, I'll bet you actually, I can't, I don't remember which one of those two things were, were overheating, but it was certainly um, Either, here, I'll show you here. Either the coupler holding onto the heat shield or the coupler behind the heat shield. So both of those things, like this, here we go. So we can move this out, move this out. I don't, actually, I don't know why I moved that other thing out. That was silly. And throw on a heat shield. Let's go 2.5 on this. So this will be a little bit bigger. This is, I think this is what I actually had on it um, at the beginning of this build or even at the beginning of this stream. And then I took it off because I was like, we don't need that much extra mass. I was trying to streamline it, make it look cooler. Uh, went too far apparently, but something like this should help protect all of the decoupler in its entirety, give it some beautifulness Protect more. Yeah, that should be fine. It looks ugly. It looks like a bunch of dumb headphones. Who am I to judge, though? Who am I to judge? So, the rest of this part, though, that I'm hoping this is good enough. But maybe what I'm going to try doing, I'll get rid of... Oopsies, that's actually connected to that. That's funny. Get back here, you piece of cabbage. Alright, we're going to attach this here. 
and hopefully by doing so we can bring these closer closer together so when these inflate and these inflate I, they were they were not touching before and now they actually have the slightest bit of overlap that's fantastic and hopefully it won't r rip this wing off when I eject them too that's that's the other challenge is sometimes that likes to do that we're gonna take this we're gonna push it out just to make sure it's clear that in theory okay let's make sure these guys are auto strutted yep they are save am I forgetting anything crazy oh these need to go we eject these guys after landing so these puppies are gonna go up here what are these two are those these What are those? Oh, that's probably this. Yep. Okay, we need to put this up here. Okay. I'm also going to do this, make sure this ejects at the same time as that decoupler holding onto it. Here we go. I think we're ready. We got to stick somebody in there. Let's grab a new pilot or two. Let's clear this out. Then go to astronaut complex, see if there's new pilots. Not that pilots really matter. Texan Space Agency, how's it going, friend? What's up? Thank you for tuning in. We are continuing development um, of the Pants Destroyer, my EVE space plane. I don't remember if you were on the other day when I was working on this, but this is what she is. So, I think we're ready to, we're just working on development of it. It's not ready to actually make a mission there, so we're just cheating and making sure it can survive entry, descent, and landing, and then even furthermore survive um, ascent, obviously. So cold snow on the ground. Oh, wait, I forget. Are you still in Texas? If so, I can't believe there's snow on the ground. You might as well live someone cooler, some, somewhere cooler than Texas. No offense. Just some friendly teasing. Um... I'm really tempted to fast forward here for a minute so we can make sure we have some daylight on Eve where we're trying to land. Um, otherwise, when we zip over there, we'll be stuck in this dumb orbit. Something like this. Give us some sweet opportunities for a lot of land to be in sunlight. Like that. Okay. Put this baby in Eve. Ta -da. You don't think you take it any colder. You're about to head south though. Well, uh, I don't feel too bad for you. It is eight degrees here and it was negative three this morning. It's supposed to s snow where you live tomorrow. Wait, where, where are you going tomorrow? Where, like, I want to know how far north it's snowing right now in Texas. Cause that seems ridiculous to me as an Iowan. Laser tag birthday weekend with your nephew. Yep. I'm 100. I, I do laser tag for my birthdays with my friends. Uh, and it's like the best decision I ever make every time. I did like my bachelor party. I just think it's it's too fun. Like we all, especially because like we're not good at it. So the panhandle of Texas. Now I can see where that can, you're starting to get up there. Pretty much might as well be in Oklahoma. And that might as well be Iowa. And then that might as well be Canada which is the Arctic Circle. So you basically live in the Arctic Circle, really, is what you're saying. Okay, we're gonna come over here. We're gonna make sure we land in this big old fatty area. One other variable, though, I forgot on that last re-entry, since we had such a slow re-entry process. I normally do deorbit to about 65,000 meters, we found is kind of the sweet spot. So I'm gonna try that here. All right, face retrograde, full throttle. Yeah, I'm not familiar though with Lubak. But I have gone through Texas quite a bit. 65, nice and pretty. I'm gonna quick save. I don't care if I happen to lose anybody. Any pointers that will make the occasion special? For you or for your nephew? I would say my number one thing that I like to do, I'm like a, I like to sneak around, crouch around, get all like low. Um, 
but I think that the big thing is moving your head. When someone's like shooting, you just kind of like move your whole body and they get confused and they start shooting random places. That's what I like to do. Frag Sandwich, 100. Hello. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome to the Pants Destroyer. As we begin um, our re-entry, our entry, descent, and landing, um, for those of you, uh, maybe, I'm sure at least most of you are sick of hearing this, but this is not the way a space plane should enter things, enter an atmosphere. It is improper, but this is the only way that I can make this one do it. So, cheers to that, right? Last time we went to play Lazy Tag, you got kicked out for taking it too seriously with three Marines. I could see, I almost take it too seriously with like my nephews and stuff too, or like my friends that are, we just joke around, but you get really into it. It's really hard to, to let go of that sometimes, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. So hopefully that, maybe that won't happen this time. Or maybe, maybe you will. Maybe you'll get kicked out. I hope your nephew's like four years old and you're just like, ah, oh, got you. I killed you. You're dead. Scar him for life. And he's like, I never want to. And by two, you meant, yeah, two, de two degrees, I'm assuming Fahrenheit. Stay on your feet. <laughs> All right, here we go. Things are getting spicy. Got our nice little medium rear going. These mushrooms are looking super cool, super neat. Pointing lasers out their butt. Perfect. Just like I like it. Now, the reason I'm showing you aerodynamic forces like this is so you can see that all of the drag, we have these big giant, whatever, we're using them, instead of using them as heat shields, we're using them as supersonic parachutes so they can actually survive this high speed um, section of reentry. Um, and they go in the back so that they keep the nose pointed forward and the back pointed backward because the center of drag wants to be behind the center of mass. So that's why they're there, and this illustration, these uh, red lines, red laser beams, pew, 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 are pretty much showing that exactly. What well, real space planes don't have big umbrellas sticking out the back? I can't name one that don't. Except for all of them. Um, or, no, not all of them. All of them use the classic umbrella, umbrella re-entry. You know, we had the space shuttle, and they had the big umbrella Mary Poppins scene that they do every time. They go, okay, Mary, open her up. She goes, okay, and like tink it out classic this is normal and then they let the front catch on fire and it was a whole show oh, i miss this space shuttle oh so far everything's looking nominal we like to say nominal around here because that's what people do say in space i don't know i try not to take this too seriously um a lot of people that play kerbal they play it pretty much like it's a space agency i play this very much like it's curled space program like I want it to look nice. I want it to look nice. I want it to function. But other than that, at least at this at this point in my life, I'm just a young chap. I just want to have fun. And that being said, I don't... Like, sometimes when I play career mode, I do try to take it a little more seriously. I take it a little more like, well, that's not realistic. Um, how I'm not quite to the pan, to the point of how, um, how EJ plays. When he plays, he plays it like it's life. Um, like if you land something off of the air, you have to go retrieve it. Otherwise it's gone. Otherwise it doesn't count. Stuff like that. Um, but yeah, these words aren't made up. Yeah, it's true. Um, yeah, saying nominal, that's obviously not made up. That's true. All words are made up, but so, uh oh, what is happening? We shouldn't be receiving any kind of twitch. This should be nice and stable now. Here we go. 2400. 2300. Oh no, 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 no. I hate that. That's just the dumbest. Ugh. Quick save, reload. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to try changing our profile and we'll actually try a steeper re entry this time. See if hitting the. Well, let's try a less steep. So we're sitting here about to re enter at 6500. Let's try re entering at 70 and see if that feels better. <laughs> uh, was that supposed to happen like that? Yep. Yep, the classic kill your entire crew on re-entry. Just as planned. Okay. So, okay, why not just come in butt first and use the heat shields as designed? <laughs> um, 
Well, here's the deal. I'm, again, I want it to actually function so that the aerodynamics can do their thing. So that otherwise you end up with this whole whirlwind as you come in backwards and I don't know, it just gets crazy. So like I said, I'm, I'm riding that line between like realistic but not because you would never re-enter like this. Um, what are you doing here, you piece of cabbage? Control from here. It is. Okay. Close that baby. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for all the advice, everybody. <sighs> Making life so hard. Just kidding, I love you guys. We are going to speed this up and turn on those lasers. You were raised by sailors and trucks. Oh, I don't care. You can... S Actually, I do care. I do want the chat room to, to maintain a positive and, uh, it, you know, it, it looks like it happened to... Um, wherever that's where it looks like they gave us some stars here on my end. So I didn't see, it did censor it. Um, I do try to keep the chat room PG, um, but more so than PG, I don't really care about that. In real life, I swear like crazy. Um, when I'm doing this, there's a lot of my potential Instagram fans could be parents with kids and stuff like that. So um, I keep it PG on here. But more important to me than keeping the chat and stuff PG is to keep the chat friendly, fun, positive, positive. Um, and most importantly, I use you guys for a knowledge base. When I play this game, and I don't know, it's so great because I can reach out to Mission Control here and someone will know. It's incredible. And so I, I use that as a resource for um, for my fans to come in, be able to ask questions, and know they're not going to get berated by people for not knowing the answer. That's, that's the kind of um, community we're trying to develop here. Um, everyday Astronauts' mission is to bring space down to Earth for everyday people. Um, that means regurgitating some of that really heavy lifting, the, the technical stuff. Try to make it fun, funny, and factual. Um, and so if you're tuning in, if this is your first time here in this chat room, tuning in, um, feel free to speak up. Just make sure that you're engaging with people, um, understanding that they might not have the same technical expertise you do, that they might um, this might be their first time tuning in, that they might know nothing. Um, and hey, <laughs> Frag Sandwich, dude, you don't need to be knowledgeable at all. Uh, I want people here to that are uh, you know that are just here to have fun. This is fun and first and foremost fun. Um, maybe hopefully funny. If I do something stupid and cry and uh, wet my pants, I will show you that. I will actually show you uh, the the defecation and the urination in my pants afterwards. Um, that's part of the funny. I haven't. It hasn't happened yet, but who knows. I'm pretty fresh into this. We're like three weeks into streaming here. I don't know. Who knows? Um, but then the factual part comes in at the end, too. It's just kind of the icing on top. I want people to be able to have um, a knowledge base they can they can pick up here. So, yes, there's a lot of lingo that, that comes in, obviously, from the spaceflight community that can be extremely scary, especially when you start dealing with... Um, if you start dealing with all the acronyms. Um, ASS. Acronyms seriously suck. Um, you know, we... There's a lot to learn. This is looking less stable than normal. What is going on? Why is this happening? Looks like it's... I'm going to turn on the fine control so it's not going too nuts. Looks like it's kind of rocking back and forth. Making some big movements. Okay, so last time we made it to 2350 before blowing up. I'm just seeing if by changing our, our how steep we're coming in um, to our re-entry, how steep we are if that makes a difference or not, or if it's still just going to blow up no matter what. The Pants Destroyer, Michael Bay approved. <laughs> um, icing on top, yeah. The potential the potential for poop in my pants. Yeah. <laughs> just kidding with you. Um, again, yeah, I, I just want to have fun. And, oh no, why are we landing here? Are you serious? How did I not pay attention? Oh, we better also pay attention to what we're doing in life. How do... What? What? I feel like we... I thought we were landing in like the pure all over everything land everywhere area. I don't remember there. Look at these things about to overheat. What are these? Oh, apparently those were our heat shields. Oh, apparently that's the front where everyone lives. Seemed like it was that exact same place too. 
One more quick reload. <laughs> uh, Cretaceous, is this a place to argue which is best, the shot of the brand? Got it. 100%. Um, in my younger, more vulnerable years, my father gave me some advice that I've been turning over in my mind since. Whenever you feel like criticizing anyone, he told me, just remember that all the people in this world haven't had the same advantages you've had. That's so exactly right. Um, yeah, isn't that weird? The heat shields overheated first here at their... Oh, do I not have lights on this beautiful thing? They overheated here at the decoupler that holds onto the heat shield. I think that's what let go first. So since that one didn't work, see, look at, we're coming in. How did we land? How did we end up? What? 70,000 changed a lot because we ended up landing way over here. Let's try it steeper. Let's try 60,000 and see if that's better or worse. Um, sometimes that surprises me, you know, like where it hits atmosphere enough to slow it down more. I have no idea, but that's the beauty of Kerbal Space Program is it's easy to quick reset and give it another try. All right, let's inflate those beautiful mushrooms. Yeah, stuff going boom. Of course. Why wouldn't it? I'm excited. I um, just previously edited at like uh, 1 o'clock or something my time here. I edited the photo for this weekend. Um, for my Instagram. I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. I had a lot of great feedback from the chat room. So I'm excited about that. Excited to post it tomorrow. I can give you guys a little sneak peek, but I don't have Lightroom open anymore and I'm too lazy to open it while this is running or else stuff will probably go to crazy. That's the opening lines to a great Gatsby, by the way. Oh, <laughs> I have no culture. <laughs> Thank you for telling me that. So that I don't like try to reminisce about this and be like, my friend on the internet had this excellent saying and credit you for it. Um, well, not when you forget to quick save every time you do something. Sorry, the heat shields. Uh -huh. So I'm, I'm, I'm not quite. Uh... Oh, you should try and put lights on so you don't have to wait. That's exactly right. I, I thought this thing had some lights on it. Apparently that was a different iteration. Who knows anymore? I'm confused and scared. Mostly scared. Lasers on. Coolest things. <laughs> Apparently you're in a room of people that have never read, like me. Um, don't know how to read, like me. And will never read. Me. Oh yeah. Just another day. Trying not to explode. I'm trying to get through this. This part gets uh, tedious sometimes. I'm just so excited to land and take off and make sure that, despite it saying I don't have nearly enough delta V, seeing if we can prove it wrong. Because like I said, we really didn't change much. Yet yeah, it's calculating it as like two or three thousand meters per second less delta V. So I say I don't trust it. You say tomato. All right, time to turn off physics warp. Adopting the most redneck accent. Y'all need to get yourselves out, out there, out of that, some of that there culture they've been talking about. <laughs> See, I can't even read that. Uh, welcome to my hell. Yes, y'all need to get some of that culture. My friend went to <laughs> Spaghetti Works. You got all cultured up like Italia. All right. T -t Tomato. Okay, please don't overheat. I think that's these, isn't it? Those are the ones. That's crazy to me. Don't overheat. Don't be a jerk. Yeah. I love how it goes like, about to explode back to explode, perfectly fine. About to explode back to explode, perfectly fine. Like it just shuts off. Like why? Look at these. These are all normal. And those ones just go... Crazy. Look, though, they're kind of done heating up. Apparently, they decided, hey, we're fine. We're fine with this. This is normal. This is our reality. We're fine. So this seems to be working better. We're at 2650, 2500, 2450, 2400. Dang it. 2400, we had a boom. Right at 2400. And the rest of it, we had a boom. 
Hmm. Mech Jeb, you survived. Of course you did. You're invincible. Black box of Kerbal. So I think this means we actually need to make some design changes, unfortunately. Which means we pop back over to our friendly space center. <laughs> this is fine. This is normal. Uh, internet dinosaur, sorry, the, the lasers are actually turning on aerodynamic um, forces. It's showing you where, um, like how wind is affecting things and stuff like that. Um, it's a cool way to know, like make sure things are staying straight and stuff like that as we're re-entering. Read this in your redneck accent. The other day I shot me a possum, buried that yellow-eyed rascal two feet deep. Lo and behold, the joker dug himself up an hour later and ate one of my hands right in front of her chicks. For the highlights. <laughs> what? Oh. I like that I'm like reading it very like clearly having to read. It's probably really stupid. I hope someone was tuning in right then. They're like, they're just like, oh, every day, let's see what. No, just immediately noped out of there. I'm assuming you're making me lose potential people. All right. So, unfortunately, that exists on the internet now. <laughs> Great. You guys are going to start holding me ransom. Hold, holding me ransom? Holding ransom on me? Me holds ransom. You holds ransom. Um... Okay, so unfortunately, I fear this means that we have to add two more stupid deaccelerators again. Two more big, dumb mushroom pants. And I hate doing that, because it just looks so stupid. It looks stupid with three, let alone that many. I didn't try re-entering even steeper. But maybe that's an even worse idea. Oh, okay. Any thoughts out there in mission control? Anything you can think we can do? Anything you can think we can do? Anything you can think we can do? Anything you can drink we can do? <laughs> I love that all this is coming from the Texan in our group. So, let's see here. I'm still really battling this out in my head how do we want to do this what about some forward facing heat shields it's the problem is doing so makes it really hard to detach those heat shields because as you're still re-entering then you know if you're going nose first um where's that heat shield gonna go it's just gonna come back and blow up wings and stuff like that as you try to det detach it but maybe I could try just landing with a heat shield. I guess I honestly haven't thought of that and then just deploying it when we take off, before we take off. I'm, I'm okay with that. I can live with that. Let's try it. Why does that look crooked? Excuse me, sir. Okay, much worse. All right. Huh? No? Okay. Let's try again. Let's try again. You're right. Um, Internet Dinosaur, that's exactly actually what I'd prefer to do. The only problem is Delta V-wise. Actually, why don't I try decoupling them? We're doing it. And Texan Space Agency, you're right. I should certainly pitch up. All these things um, I have tried. And the problem is pitching up has traditionally blown the whole thing up. And it can't hold the pitch. That's the big problem. But why don't I try mounting some detachable heat shields and make it so they they pop off before we take off so that we can actually maintain I'm just nervous though that even getting all this weight to Eve is going to be a pretty big challenge but I'm, I'm willing to give it a try for you guys and for me let's try it why not we'll use some traditional heat shields pop that baby on there like that I think we definitely need that same type of thing up front. Oh, well, these are just so, I like the idea. 
I love, trust me, I tried wing breaks. Or, um, I love having the uh, air breaks. I love them so much. I wanted to put them in the back, actually. So, again, they put that center of drag back. But look, unfortunately, um, the extended skin maximum temperature is only 1,200 degrees. So, they work fine coming in on their own. But the second you hit B and try to extend them, pff, they blow up. They become dust. So I'm going to just try this. Watch us decrease our delta V like crazy. For now. But I love this idea. This is honestly how I'd prefer to do it. How much overlap do we have here? The right amount. We just want a little bit here. Maybe we push this one a smidge forward. <laughs> um, and where are all these? Here. Let's put these um, up here so that when we land, that's when we're ditching them. I guess they could fall off with these too. I <laughs> Scook them. Scook them? I think you're scook them? I'm not entirely sure what you mean there. But maybe I do. Maybe I know exactly what you mean. Scook them. All right, hold on. I'm working on. Oh, oh. Something like that. The second. I think you're Skookum <laughs> the second. Ask a Canadian. Oh, great. Now I'm probably getting called a bacon, Baconator with cheese, and I don't even know it on my own live stream. How embarrassing. Okay, I'm just going to kind of put a whole bunch of these in here. Line the whole bottom. So we, I would love to hold that, like, 40-degree pitch. It would just be so cool. Almost because it would look right. This is a ridiculous way to have to do this, but I don't know. Until Kerbal, until the developers fix and make it so Eve doesn't just destroy everything that enters it without a heat shield. They just really changed it now. It used to be a lot easier. Space planes could come in all smooth and gradually. Baconator cheese. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Internet Dinosaur. Hello. Hi. Yes. I'm still here. Am I still here? Are you still here? Oh, oh really? Um, excuse me. That makes sense. Um, excuse me, Internet Dinosaur. Uh, would you please mind explaining uh, Skokum? I would love to know. Skokum. I could squawk them. I could squash them. Okay. Um... Let's retract all these guys. Skook them. Skook them. These things are adding so much weight, but I don't care. I'm going to try it like this. I'm just so nervous that this won't even, you know, it's like an all or nothing situation. I really don't want to like have to put all that there I don't know we'll try this we'll see if this makes any difference all this work might be for nothing just like life as is life skook em. tell me tell me now what is this skook em you speak of oh whoops Whoops. Hey there, uh, you know, Texan Space Agency, your buddies out there in Texas gave me a pretty nice article uh, in the Chive. I don't know if you're familiar with the Chive. They're based out of Austin. They gave me a real nice little article yesterday that dropped. I was very, very pleased about it. 
So maybe I owe Texas a, little, a bit of love. Talk about ridiculous looking, though. <laughs> hey, maybe, you know what? What if these, uh, do these high, handle higher temperatures? 2,500. Maybe that 100K is the difference between it blowing up and not blowing up. Maybe I could just line it with radiators. Might look better. Let's drag all these up. Let's just try this first, see if we're on anything. You always owe Texas a bit of love. It's true. Um, we're going to call this 1.6. <laughs> I don't know how I went from 1 to 2 to 1.5. Starting to sound like I don't have a clue what I'm doing. All right. Let's see here. It means great. I like I like things that are great. I can tell the parts count is significantly higher already. <laughs> you know what we inadvertently designed? A snowmobile! Look at that. Woo! Yeah. Bringing this back to life. Okay. Oopsies. Let's go ahead and throw this thing up into Eve. Hey, pa hey, Panny, Pammy, I hope you're ready to thrive on Eve. Okay, let's speed up around the backside here. Skookum means great. That is crazy. I had no idea. How am I 32 years old and just now hearing words from my neighboring country? I mean, I guess, wait, that's like me saying, how do I not know fluent Spanish? Uh, when, you, when you put it in that sense, but I mean, I feel like, come on, I should know. All right, let's activate these old engines, kill that out. Control from here. And oh, let's also save up that stupid monoprop. Stop wasting monoprop, you old jerk. Uh, I don't care about that monoprop. F5 for you. I hope it's the uh, I hope it's the guy that always burns himself with the unibrow. <laughs> You're right. I'm sure living next to Canada is basically like living next to yourself if you're in, in the United States like I am. Very similar everything. I got a skookum deal on the Zam... Z I th think you meant to say Zamboni. Unless there's another word in, in Candanana that's Zamboy. Um, we're going to start... We're going to do 65. 65 is an old tried and true re-entry speed. But maybe I should be going in slower with... Uh, if we're going to try to hold that steep glide approach. Steep pitch for our glide. We need to flip around pretty much 180 degrees. That looks stupid. It looks like some kind of mother cow with too many udders. Gosh, I just made myself sound very Iowan. At least I didn't make myself sound more Texan. Okay. I, have li I live next to Mexico and I speak f fluent Spanish. But yeah, yeah. Screw you. I want to learn Spanish better. My Spanish is super, pretty much Spanglish. I learned in like high school, which is way too late. I do. I did retain a decent amount of vocabulary that pops out of nowhere sometimes. I was like, wait, why did I remember that word? Oh, look at that, mother cow. Pepperoni. Now we got a beautiful pepperoni ship. We went from mushrooms and, and pizza crust to just straight up pepperoni platter on the bottom here. Super happy about that. Oh no. Okay, apparently we're gonna require, it's going to require RCS for us to hold this pitch, which is terrifying. Maybe for this EDL portion. See, here's gonna be the problem. Watch, we're gonna go so far off like left and right and stuff that, it's just going to get all crazy. And then I'm going to have to say, I told you so. And then you're going to stop coming around. Cr 
Cretaceous. Thank you. The old pepperoni space plane. I don't know how I feel about all this. I really don't. I still feel like a lot of crap's about to blow up. Maybe even earlier. See, this is correct. This is how a space plane should re-enter. Like, pretty much exactly like this. But... It's pretty darn strong. I mean, you're not going to lasso yourself a brontosaurus and ride her up to Coquihalla Summit, but she's pretty strong. Scoo coomer than a butt crimp for sure, but a darn right scoo coomer than one of these speaker wire abortions. <laughs> wow, yeah. I maybe don't know what that is. You're right. Internet dinosaur, I think you're right. I think now we've moved beyond Pants Destroyer and just straight up into pe Pepperoni Land. No, uh, we tried radiators, and that does not work. That does not do anything, unfortunately, for re-entry. Um, although I'm, I'm into the idea of trying radiators instead of heat shields because they're a lot lighter. And it would look more streamlined. Isn't that right? Haven't we tried radiators? Um, it's working for now. But wait until we get further in here. What's going to happen is we'll probably become unaerodynamic, unstable aerodynamically. Turn on the lasers and show you. All of a sudden it'll probably just pitch and spin around for no apparent reason. So it always happens on Eve now. Every, Ever since I've been trying in 1.2 now, I can't re-enter Eve like this. Um, yeah, the static ones, they do nothing, unfortunately. Radiators, Michael Bay film. <laughs> okay, well, here we go. 2,800 still surviving. But get ready. I feel like stuff's about to get crazy. We are maxed out on pitch, which means it's probably going to end up pitching down. I'm going to increase the authority limit on these to help, hopefully help keep that nose up. Here we go. Get ready for that instability that I talk about. And bye-bye. That's what always happens. I'm going to turn off the lasers because now we're just all over the place. Yep. Now you see why I wanted to put a big old drag chute. You know, something... Something that can just hold. Although, sometimes this works, believe it or not. Doing something like this, it actually cools all the different surfaces. I hate it because it just doesn't seem realistic at all. Um, prizes to be announced. Would I be done? How about this? KSP Streamers push-up contest. Yeah, I'm in. For like four push-ups. I have a feeling EJ would probably win that one. But look, we survived! It was dirty for a while. Real messy situation, and we might not recover still. And we were gliding for just a brief moment. I'm going to turn off RCS. We're going full-blown Top Gun style. Screwed. Let's try and make this thing just go pro-grade. Settle down and go pro-grade. Say it. Settle down. Go prograde. Someone has pledged 100 push-ups to perfect form. I'm out then. I'm completely out. There's no way. <laughs> hey, Inspector Bluer, what's up? Um, you're right. I could add one mushroom to the back. That's not a bad idea. So we survived this portion for now. Let's spin around here and face 90 at least. If we can, without crashing and losing all control again. Should I quick? I feel like I should probably quick save here. I'm going to turn on find control. We need to start pitching up. This is a hard part because sometimes this stuff rips the wings right off. We did survive. It was not pretty. And I'm thinking I should just land with the... Uh, Land with the heat shields on and then just kick them off when we land. 
<laughs> that's not a bad idea. My push-ups count double if I'm in the suit. I like that idea a lot, actually. Ooh, trying not to rip these wings off here. Get funked. Thanks for the auto host. I know that probably is silly to say because it's an auto host. All right. Maybe you'd spin less without the heat shields. That's right. I'm I'm fine with speeding up a little bit. We can we can bleed off a ton of speed at the end just by pitching up. It's crazy. Um, I'm fine with some acceleration at this point. And we're still not even near the thickest part of the atmosphere. This is actually looking quite quite decent. Um. <laughs> yeah, I I'm actually very surprised that we survived re-entry doing this. It's not the see that's the thing is I want to just come in. Realistically, um, we did survive, which I will admit, you guys were right. I did not see that coming. But yeah, I wonder if we would have survived without the heat shields, without all the pepperonis. X dollars per push up could be a K cool. That would be sweet. I'd be in. I would definitely be in. Or even like, yeah, just bringing it up in the community too. Um, yeah, you should line up a charity that that would be great for that. Uh-oh, we're coming up fast. Time to really pitch up. Get those landing gear ready, Tim. What are you doing? Here we go. Let off a ton of speed there. Something blew up. I think it was just a heat shield, though. Yep, just some heat shields. Breaking not too hard. We're losing a lot of stuff. A lot, way too much stuff. Crap. At least we have another re-entry attempt. We have another re-entry attempt. Let's try that. Bunch of people chickened out. Hey, I mean, come on. What's it gonna hurt? <laughs> yes! No! Okay, let's try again. I'm going to go somewhere. Oh, of course, the reload shears the wings off. Of course. Stupid jerk. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. No, okay, let's turn on a cheat then so we can freaking make it into What do we do like no crash damage or something unbreakable joints? We'll do that just while while we re uh, while we quick save. I Hate that when quick save like destroy stuff There we go Turn that back off. Okay, let's go somewhere a little bit flatter. And extend our glide slope a little bit more. I kind of got a little drastic there. Got real distracted with all that push-up talk. All right, not bad here. Ooh, yeah. Cracking the old back. And neck. My neck. My back. I crack it and then I crack it and stuff. And I can talk to EJ too, I bet. Do we have DOS on board yet? I feel like I feel like EJ would win for some reason. He seems uh pretty pretty manly. What about Scott Manly? His name has the word manly in it. Funny story about peeing in space. They had a problem with the Apollo astronauts requesting bigger size urinary urinary devices that were anatomically necessary. Ego is getting in the way of a good seal, so NASA just changed the sizes. Called it medium large and extra large. I've I've heard that where they they were like, oh no, I need at least like an extra large, and it was actually not working as well. Um, that's hilarious. Typical guys. We're such ridiculous creatures sometimes. Start pitching up a little bit. This area looks a little bit softer at least. Pitching up all the way. Yikes. I don't know what blew up, but it doesn't seem to be crucial. I might need some wings or wheels up front on this thing. Oh look, look how the wheels are like cockeyed now. I don't think I realized it would ever do that.
Please don't go totally off angle. Although it doesn't matter. We end up going so straight up anyway. <laughs> I don't know if it's... Oops. I had dinner with Dawson Houston a while back. Awesome. Yeah, I guarantee Dawson would be on board. That dude's super friendly and a charitable dude. Well, we are on the surface, limping a little bit, and rolling backwards for fun. Totally on purpose. Let's strengthen these brakes up a little bit. Maybe that'll help. I hate when this happens. Like, stop, you jerk. I could add another set of wheels altogether. Okay, this is kind of getting ridiculous now. Please stop. <laughs> I'm nervous about blowing all these heat shields off. I have a feeling I'll, like, rip off landing gear and stuff. I don't know why I fear that. I just do. Um, in my own spacesuit, uh, I take it off. I never wear that thing for more than five, ten minutes. Or, I mean, like, I guess when I'm streaming, sometimes like an hour. But I, yeah, I, I will never wear it long enough. Honestly, you can actually just unzip and pee out if you need to. I made a very graphic motion down there when peeing. I do apologize. Um, but yeah, it's not a big deal. It's actually not a big deal. I don't I need like a urinary bag or anything crazy. Anth, what's up? Thanks for stopping in. Okay. Let's see. How many push-ups would it take for Chuck Norris to alter the trajectory of an asteroid to save Earth? One. We all know that answer. It's one. Everybody knows that. Anth, how are you? Thank you for swinging in here. We have a, a moderately successful landing here on Eve. I'm waiting for it to stop spinning around like a jerk so we can, uh, I don't know, so we can quick save. Because this is really getting annoying. <laughs> you know what? I might reload it one more time. Give these guys more control authority so that we can pitch up harder. You know, at least rotate up one more install and hopefully have a smoother landing. I do think also it would be very beneficial for me to have another set of landing gear. Kind of looks like these guys just aren't doing anything. Hey, thanks, Inspector. That means a lot. I'm glad people. I'm glad there's people out there that appreciate it. Um, I have. A, I mean, it's something I, I can't really stop doing. I just have too much fun with it. It's just a passion project, and I keep having people encourage me along the way, and that encouragement means a lot. So I keep. I keep doing it. It's for people like you. So thank you. Um, this is getting really tedious and boring. So let's go ahead and we're going to load up that quick save. I'm going to make it so, before I do that, remember as we were loading the quick save, uh, it was ripping the wings off for whatever reason. So I'm going to do this, make it unbreakable joints again real quick, just so as we load up the quick save, here we go, quick save, reload, turn off unbreakable joints again. Uh, yep, unbreakable joints off now that we survived that. Now the other thing I said I was going to do, I want to increase control authority on things so that we can hopefully pitch up a little bit more at the very end and get a slower stall speed and therefore a little bit um, and not break off landing gear and stuff like that. Increase that, especially on these big fatty ones. These ones are the ones that matter. I should quick save here now that I increase that. But I also want to turn on fine control because sometimes it's those, <laughs> yeah. You found out about Everyday Astronaut looking for a new streamer. Really? That's, I'm, I'm three weeks new to to Twitch, so it really shocks me when that anyone would, would have found me on Twitch alone. Like, this is not my platform at all. This is completely new to me. That's crazy. I'm actually really surprised. Well, thank you. I mean, thanks for checking it out, and thanks for sticking around, too. I'm thinking I might need to... I might need to um, Give myself a little extra thrust right at the end. If it starts to if it starts to stall out, I might just hit the thrust one more time just to gain altitude. Looks like I'm going to be going up a mountain on this one, which could be really scary. Be nice if I could if I could do this going downhill like this, where I could. Oh, here we go. Let's also turn that engine on. Hitch up, baby. Something like this. Come on. Here 
gonna try to just pitch up the last second. Oh no. And I wasted so much Delta V. But look at this. This might actually be better than that last one. <laughs> I think it is. What? We came in like smoking hot. We didn't blow up any wheels. We didn't blow up that nose cone. Wow. Uh, in a shocking twist of events, all physics were defied today on the surface of Eve. <laughs> what? Okay, and I can get a quick save out of it. I hate that we're still flying this pepperoni plane around, but you know, it works. So now the big question is, can we blow off these pepperonis without blowing everything up? <sighs> All right, I think uh, I think we need to give this a go. I think I gotta hit. I gotta get over my fears. We got a quick save. Let's let's blow off the heat shields. As violent as it was, it looks like everything else maintained intact. <laughs> okay, okay, everybody, it looks like we're uh, we're ready to take off. Did everything really survive? Watch, and we're gonna like find out that something's like entirely missing. All right, um, I'm going to go ahead and quick save again. All right. Here we go. Let's do our takeoff procedure now. <sighs> Three, two, one, hip hip. Oh no. I'm pitching up all the way already. Gear up. Now this had worked, but we did bleed off quite a bit of um, Delta V. So notice here's the beautiful thing. We are below a one to one thrust ratio right now. And we're still climbing. That's the beauty of wings. If you're wondering why we're doing wings on Eve, that's why. So now we actually have enough Delta V, we could pitch straight up, and we're probably going to here. And we need to hold radial out. So now as we climb, there we go, beautiful. Let's see if this works. If we can get above 5,000 with this first stage on, I will be very happy. Looks like that's going to be no problem, actually. Hopefully I have clean separation of this stuff. Oh yeah, above five. Here we go. Coming up on six, maybe even. Not quite. 55-ish. Nice clean separation there. Turning on RCS. Alright. We're doing it. I honestly don't know if I can get myself to fly to Eve, though, with all those pepperonis. I don't know if I can do it. Alright, slowing down. I'm going to throttle back a little bit. At this point, we're fighting a lot of air, just catching ourselves on fire for no reason. You're a fan of... Texas... TSA, are you a fan of the pepperonis? I don't know if I'm a fan. They look so ridiculous. They did work, kind of. I just don't know if I can. Oh, that's right. I have to, like, coast up now. I'll show you why. Oh, no, 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 Batman! Hello? Hello? Scrap. Scrap! Oh, good, you're a big... F okay, that's awesome. It makes sense, doesn't it? It's kind of cool. Well, I think I messed this one up, unfortunately. I don't know why RCS isn't working. I have all these. This has been happening to me a few times, where... It forgets that I have these guys. Like, what are you doing? I have... Okay, so what happened is I accidentally left radial out on. Um... <laughs> what? Okay, let's let's just revert. We can do this, I promise. I don't promise, but I think we can. Like I said, we're also we're only going for so before I had a thousand extra meters per second of delta V, and that's just too much. That's selfish of me. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, hip, hip. Run over those heat shields, have some fun. Monster truck them. 
Can't see anything. Getting smoked out. All right. Here we go. Pitching up. I like to go to about 45 degree angle so we get a lot of climb. Um, we can hold it for a while, but I do need to be straight up and down by the time those wings are off because that middle stage needs to be perfectly straight up. And Eve's atmosphere is so stinking thick. If you're anything off straight up, like when on a single stick, if this was a, a normal looking rocket and we were not straight up and down, it would not even come close to surviving. Um, it would just flip around like no matter what. Eve hates everything. Eve is a jerk. Just trying to straighten out our, our prograde going right through radial out would be ideal. So what did we get? We got 5,500 last time. Let's see if this happens to be any more efficient. And also, I will angle a little bit. But here, uh-oh. Oh, I need to get ready for this. So yes, right now, going straight up is our most efficient thing. We normally will do a gravity turn at 35,000 meters. This thing is not stable enough to do that, unfortunately. I know that from experience. Um, we have to coast up a ways. Let's turn stability assist on instead of radial out. Throttle back so we're not wasting a bunch. We're just going to try to get up so we're coasting up to like 75 and then pitch over a little bit. Turn on our RCS. I don't know why these aren't firing sometimes. But... 60,000 meters, and there's going to be our 70 in a second. Throw the main engine cutoff. Hey, thank you. Wow. Hey, thanks for the host. That's great. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much. I don't even know how to say your uh, Materoignica. Thank you so much. A raid from, thank you. That is awesome. I really appreciate that. I was watching him stream the other night. It was awesome. All right, here we go. Now we're going to do this, light this baby up, get our last little bit of forward velocity like this, and get ready for stage. Hopefully, yeah, there we go. Okay. As long as this thing, we're going to try to ride our 90 degree heading pretty nice and tight. A new follower, thank you, the forest duck. That means a lot. Thank you. Thanks for stopping in. Thanks for the follow. We are getting off EVE in our EVE space plane. We're down to just our final, our third stage. Hi guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut. I really appreciate you guys stopping in here. So here we go. Last stage. Thanks for those follows. By the way, we had the Flow 177 and uh, RUDOPG. Thank you guys for the follow. All right, we're just trying to keep this nice and close to 90 here. I hope these are turned off still. Good. We might need some of that. We're looking pretty good here. Matt or David, that is easier. It's going fantastic. Thank you so much for stopping in. Thank you for, for the raid, for bringing your guys over here. I, that really means a lot. We are just getting out of Eve's atmosphere. Thank you, 1337. Haxorg or something like that. Thank you for the follow. Thanks for tuning in. Alrighty here. We're going to pull up a little bit here so we don't sink below. We want to stay just a, just below our Apoasis. And we're getting close to... This will be close. This will be really close. All right, here we go. Coming up, I think I think we're gonna achieve orbit if we need to circularize. Um, worst goes to worst. I'm gonna push it out here a little bit. Our our apoasis just a smidge, so that if we need to coast up and use RCS to finish off, we can. But it's gonna be no problem. We're gonna finalize our circularization up here at apoasis. 110. <laughs> Two, two minutes left. We're gonna. Thanks for that follow. I really appreciate it. Um, Altair, Altair GQC. I'm gonna say guac. I feel like that sounds appropriate. Altair guacamole. I have no idea. Here we go. Pitching down. We're gonna just fin finalize our orbit here. And we are officially in Eve orbit. 
with just enough margin to spare too. So I'm happy about that. 110 by 116. We have 148 meters per second and we still have a command module on top of here um, full of monoprop. So that can totally do everything. Um, that will be able to dock us to. So what's going to happen is in our space plane, before we enter the atmosphere, we're actually going to get a tug out, a little tiny tug that'll dock with this thing, and it's going to push it back to Kerbin. It doesn't need much at all. Like, we only need, we're talking about like, I don't remember what it is, like 1,500 or 2,000 meters per second. So it's basically just going to be um, something smaller than this even, with a nice efficient engine on there. <laughs> I'll tear. Yeah, guac, I don't know. You'll find out if you guys stick around ever. Um, I cannot read. I cannot pronounce things. All I like to do is take pictures in a Russian spacesuit. So anything other than that is just, uh, that's just cherry on top. So try, good luck trying to get me to pronounce anything ever at all. For instance, watch me try to pronounce this. Vernier. No idea. That's what happens when you live in a bubble and don't realize that everyone else in the world has been playing Kerbal Space Program. I've been playing this for three years, just started live streaming three weeks ago, and just started like watching other people like DOS and stuff. I met DOS um, a year ago, coming up on almost exactly a year ago, down at Kennedy Space Center, and <laughs> come to find out, <laughs> it's so stupid, he told me that, he's like, dude, you gotta stream. He's like, I wanna see you play Kerbal, because I'm telling him, yeah, I've got this whole Eve thing. He's like, I wanna see that. I really wanna see that. I'm like, yeah, I, I'll totally stream sometime. He's like, dude, do it. And that was a year ago. And then here we are, 2017. And my goal for 2017 is like, I'm going to start streaming more. Um, and here we are. Finally, I am streaming. And I'm finding out that there's a lot of people out there way smarter than me. I think I knew that anyway. But holy cow, people come in here that give me the best tips about things, shortcuts and, and hotkeys and things that I had no idea. The, for the first three months of me playing Kerbal, I didn't know you could turn SAS on. For another three months, I didn't know you could quick save. So we're going to say I got surprisingly good at this game just by not knowing those things existed. I had been to the moon. I had been to Duna without quick, Duna and back without quick saving. I didn't know it was a thing. Ugh. Let's say those days are over. Now I'm a uh, ravaging, mischievous old quick saver. Um, but for those of you also just tuning in, in case you don't know, I come here from Instagram. That's where I'm from. I, uh, I've been doing Instagram for three years. I have this project called Everyday Astronaut. And it's me in a, a, a Russian flight suit that I bought online as a joke. And it's turned into a whole thing where now I, uh, I, work, with, uh, I work with different agencies. I've, I'm going to speak at SpaceX in February. Um, I work with the Orion, uh, the, the Orion crew capsule. Uh, their social media teams, they've invited me to come kind of whenever to produce fun content. So that's been my life. Uh, on top of my full-time job, this year I'm finally doing this full-time. Uh, not necessarily Twitch, but I'm doing Everyday Astronaut full-time. And what does that mean? That means public speaking, um, a lot more launches. I'll be down at Kennedy Space Center. I shoot for, um, I shoot for spaceflightnow.com. I'm an accredited photographer. And so I'll be attending a lot more launches this year, which I'm super stoked about. Um, I'm just trying to free up my schedule to be able to do this stuff. Uh, this is my life now. And... Uh, Twitch, yes, it's just the beginning for me for Twitch, three weeks old. But thank you guys so much, and thanks, Matt, for, for the, the raid. I really appreciate everyone popping over and checking out what we're doing. Um, you missed the exciting part of this whole thing. This is this started off life as a space plane. It's three stages. Um, we successfully re-entered using um, what I like to call uh, <laughs> the pepperoni re-entry with a bunch of heat shields. Um, and then we just successfully ascended EVE, and we're, we're parked in a nice, clean orbit. So... Um, so if I finish Eve, I can work on a Saturn V or smaller version liftoff and land on the moon, or is that too hard? <laughs> hey, you missed my, my first live stream ever was a no quick saves, no frills, 100% stock, um, version of a Saturn V mission to the moon for, on the anniversary of Apollo 17. And it went swimmingly. Nothing went wrong. It was crazy. I actually have it recorded, but it was such a, it was my, literally it was like my first time ever streaming. So I didn't. Uh, I haven't posted it yet, but um, O2 Rush, thank you. I'm, I'm, that's awesome. I'm glad you know what Everyday Astronaut is, and I'm, I'm glad you're here hanging out with me now. That's awesome. I love it. And uh, and Matt, will I be at Kennedy for CRS10 or SES10? Um, 
I don't think I'll be down there for SES 10. CRS 10, maybe it got pushed back to February now. My plan is I'm for sure at this point slated to go for the first launch at 39A. 39A is going to be, I mean, when that lights up for the first time since 2011 with a Falcon on it, are you kidding me? If I miss that, I will cry. The only thing, oddly enough, that would make me miss it is if it gets scrubbed more. I am nervous that 39A, you know, the first launch from there might take, they might have to work some kinks out. They're still finishing, you know, the build out of a brand new launch pad um, or a retrofit of a, of a pad. So it might be a long time, unfortunately, before they actually, who knows, there might be like a month or two delay where they're like, oh, uh, we just found out like our whole tanking procedure thing doesn't, I don't know. I'm just saying from experience that sometimes something new is, uh, you know, will take an extra minute or two. So I'm going to be patient. But I'm, the second I see them static fire on 39A, I'm driving down. And yes, driving down, 1,400 miles from Iowa. Um, and I'm working on, for those of you that are new to this too, I'm working on this. I have this trailer secured with a company. It's a little tiny trailer from a company called MyPod. It's, it's, a, little, it's a little guy trailers. It's called MyPod. I'm turning it into a space shuttle. That's going to be my mobile streaming platform. My way, my way to be able to bring you guys content from the road um, and also I'll sleep in it too. If I'm like, I go to shoot in the desert and stuff like that and random road trips. So when I'm public speaking and stuff like that, it's going to be my little hangout place. So, um, also my Patreon supporters will have a chance to come. I'll let them know where I'm at when I'm at places. So if I'm on the map somewhere, um, and you're a certain level of, uh, <laughs> uh, so if you're on a certain level of Patreon support, um, we'll, we'll hang out. We'll have some lunch. You can hang out, see the trailer. Um, it'll be a lot of fun. I'm really excited. This year's going to be great. So yeah, Matt, thank you. Yeah. Don't envy the drive. It's, I break it up into two days. I, I stop and hang out with some friends in Nashville. So let's, let's pop back into the, I'm just going to keep this in, in space. We'll, we'll pull it back someday. We'll just need a tug for that. I'm going to pop back into space center and show you guys that beautiful space plane I was just building. So, um, hopefully yeah, I've got everything live still. So the deal is, um, I'm, I'm really, really, really excited for 2017. I think there's going to be a lot of cool things. Um, I know there's a lot of political indifference out there in the world right now. We're not talking politics um, on my channel, at least. Uh, but regardless of the division in our country right now, one thing that I think everyone should be coming together on is how exciting this upcoming and especially next year, 2018, will be for spaceflight. It's going to be huge. Thank you so much, Simon S or Simone Kalb. I don't know how to say things. So yeah, um, <laughs> people have seen him drive before. Hey, thank you so much. I really, really, uh, really do appreciate that. I don't know what are you rapid on, I mean, I know what a rut is, but I don't know why rud please. Space will bring us together and that is not a joke. That's not some like, that's not some hippie thing. That's like, that stuff happens. You get a perspective. When everyone's, when everyone on the planet is achieving a goal, like, hey, guys, as humanity, we're going to Mars. That's a human thing. There's, we might then get into a difference between like gorillas versus humans or like snakes might be, dolphins, they're super smart. They're probably like, ah, everyone attack. We need to, we need to get to Mars first. Maybe we'll have like a space race between us and the dolphin um, and other mammals. But for now, I mean, all humans would come together. Oh, <laughs> Rudd can I not read then? Where did, I didn't see, what do you mean his name is Rudd OPG? I see Simone Kalb. I don't see anyone named Rudd, Rudd OPG. But like I said, I also can't read anything. So I'm probably reading this all wrong. I'm probably reading it backwards in a different language and everyone is sitting at home super confused, getting out the translators going, what is, what's this guy talking about? Why, why is he inside my face talking to me? So welcome to the Pants Destroyer, Mark 1.6, by the way. Um, this is what we're working on. And it's it's not as pretty as I would like it to be. It used to be a lot more streamlined, but it used to have diapers on the back of it. Big mushroom pants diapers. Um, so now we switched it out to some pepperonis, which look hideous. Um, let's see here. So long and thanks for all the fish. <laughs> the Apollo 11 mission patch includes no names at the request of the astronauts because they were going to the moon on behalf of humanity. That is incredible. I never realized that actually. Um, but the other, the other Apollo missions did have um, their name patches on them, didn't they? 
because I definitely remember seeing uh, like Cernan had a, the patch right here, you know, some of those. Um, uh, we were all going to win. That is a, it's really a beautiful sentiment. Okay. So let's, let's keep talking about this and, and figure this guy out here. So here's, here's 1.6. I'll show you 1.5. Um, 1.5 was cleaner, but also didn't work. So we had, here's the deal. We, I've explained this a few times to the people that have, that have been in mission control for a minute, but we had these in the back. Why in the back you ask? Well, they can all tell you in the chat room, it's because we need the center of pressure behind the center of mass. So that means um, we need to basically have these deploy. We, we use them as, as high, like supersonic re-entry uh, de-accelerators. We use them as parachutes basically, as like a drag chute to survive re-entry. Um, I found out I used to have five on there and it could easily do that. And even though it's pointing nose in, it would slow down enough it wouldn't overheat. But um, three was not working, so we went. We tried out our pepperoni pizza, where we put heat shields all the way along the bottom. That worked. The only problem is right around 1,700 or 2,000 meters per second in reentry of Eve, it starts doing this, Top Gun style. Goodbye goose, you're dying. Um, it came out of that somehow miraculously, and I I don't like that personally. I'm one of those like I want it to. I don't want to ever be out of control. You know what I mean? Um, at least in this. I ride that thin line between totally out of control, 100% Kerbal, and somewhat in control, like reasonable, decent human being. I don't know what decency has to do with it, but I threw that in there. Bonus points. So I'm really tempted to go back to this and try, maybe we just make these things some supersonic de-accelerators. Change these guys out. Do you guys hear? Hopefully you don't hear that. There's been someone like a sound, a compressor or something like crazy next door, and it's very, very annoying. What about canards on the nose? Um, do we think we need those? Do those, those won't bleed off any speed per se. So I don't necessarily know if we need them. I'm gonna put these guys back on mostly because A, they look awesome. Very Russian. Pointing the wrong way like an idiot. I remember my first time playing Kerbal. Okay, then we're going to stick these guys out here. Something like this. Da -da. Oh, that was only one. Why is it switch? I told you to be a pair. The compressor engine is pretty faint. Okay, good. It's driving me nuts. I think I'm about to have like a, some kind of breakdown here. So if all of a sudden you see me go, oh, I can't take it, and I throw my headphones and you see everything back here explode and and then like a chainsaw and all this stuff, just know that I'm okay with it and I need you guys to accept it as well. Let's see here. Uh, attach this old buddy to our old friend here. Come on, buddy guy. Double up. Stop seizure mode. No. I'm just going to start clicking until you figure it out. Get your stuff together. All right. Um, let's see what this is. Oh, yeah. I, I don't think I don't think that's gonna work. It turned off. Oh, back on. What is that? It's been happening a lot, and I think I just moved. I think I've got some neighbors doing some. I don't know what. I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna say my neighbors are doing meth. I don't know why an air compressor means they're doing meth. Definitely meth. Definitely meth. No, actually, I, I hope not. I'm in like the safest, like nicest, cute little cutesy America town. So it probably is meth. Actually, that's probably exactly why it's meth. Everything's too perfect. It's like Pleasantville. Um, actually, I cannot poo-poo on the place I live at all. I can't even get myself to joke about it because it's fantastic. I have gigabit internet here in Cedar Falls, Iowa. Gigabit. What? And we're about to go 10 gig within, like, within, by the end of the year, I think. We're going 10 gig. Hello. What's your guys' internet? But it's not 10 gig. Isn't that insane? I think that's, like, the, I think that's the coolest thing, that I, have, I live in this little town called Cedar Falls, Iowa, and we invested in gigabit internet as a municipality. I think that's absolutely the coolest thing ever. I really, really do. I'm super proud of my town for that. We have like really cool co-working spaces and stuff too. Um, I think it's, I think someday 
Um, what is the chief export of the municipality? Uh, the municipality is a, is a utilities company. Um, that's its chief export is, is energy, cable TV, and internet. And yeah, it's amazing. It's absolutely insane that we have that good of services. Um, I need to be able to ditch these off, though. I like this idea, though. We just end up with five of them. Oh, these look stupid, too. This looks like... I mean, I don't know. Hey! Oh! Like... What? Oh, it looks like those dinosaurs from... Uh, from oh, check this out. Straight up Jurassic Park. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> That's my daily uh, Jurassic Park impression. Anywho, got to grab some food. Hey, thanks, Matt. I really appreciate that. I'll be tuning into your channel next time I'm on. I had a great time on there the other day. So thank you so much. Thanks for everyone else for sticking around. Um, if you haven't hit the follow button, stick around here. Join Mission Control. Um, we're a little ridiculous. We're fun and, and just a positive group, though. Um, like, energy generation by what means. It's a coal power plant, but um, at least they don't have to be deployed except for re-entry and then left behind. That's true. They will at least ditch off. Um, back to CFU, Cedar Falls Utilities. So they have coal, but we've already invested. Even though we're up in Iowa, we just put a massive like 10 acre solar farm up here. Again, thanks to this municipality. Super forward thinking solar. Um, they're gonna be doing wind. Iowa actually exports more wind than we, more wind energy than we intake. Even though we have coal power plants and stuff, um, a lot of, um, there's a lot of wind energy up here. Really proud of that again. A lot of cool stuff like that so it's pretty randomly progressive um, in, in those terms so it's pretty exciting I don't know if I like this any better though than those than those things hanging off the back here because um, it worked when there were five of them on the back it worked so I don't know this, I mean to me this looks dumber and probably less stable than these just being on the back like they were before Ian, what's up Ian? how are you doing thanks for coming back in Thanks for hanging out. I'm just gonna stick these guys back on here because you know, why not? I, I feel like that was still our most effective, cleanest looking thing. And you know me, if it ain't clean, it isn't clean then at all. All right, let's see what these look like. I probably could stretch these ones out to the sides more now so we don't have as much overlap. Something like that. I'll make sure these are still, I think these are still bound to keystroke five. A bit sick, but recovering, that's great. If it ain't, if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. <laughs> uh, so five worked, three didn't, yes. Um, I was just trying to clean this thing up a little bit and make it so there weren't extra parts, you know, just small, slower or smaller count, part count and more uh, realistic, whatever that means in Kerbal terms. Yes. But now I'm nervous that I need to slide this over a little bit so that the engines don't blow it up and all that fun stuff. We also want clean separation away from this. I'm afraid that that decoupler will rip this right off with it. There we go. That shouldn't be too bad. Okay, let's call this. I think this is still a version of 1.5. 1 1.6 was pepperoni pants. Um, let's see. I think that's pretty good. Any other suggestions before we try and quick load this guy up? And I am curious how we're gonna strap uh, the tug to it. The tug might just have to sit on top. The thing that gets it back to Kerbin might just be what sits on top. I almost wanna calculate that delta V now. Let's do that. Let's, let's try a whole like EDL with the tug sitting up in space, hanging out looking great. Flexing its muscles. Okay, we're just gonna take this. Actually, we're gonna take it right here. And we're gonna attach a tug here by the docking port. See what it's gonna take, and then we're gonna kind of move it off to the side. And, uh, oh, not that one. Junior. And we're gonna see what this actually takes to get it home. I hope it's not huge. I want this thing to be, uh, I need a probe, and it needs to have some solar and all that junk. Ta-da, probe core, tiny little battery on there. Keep this nice and light, but then we'll put some extendable solar panels. Let's see, I'm hoping it's not much bigger than this to get it home. 
Can someone look up the delta V of how much delta V it takes to get back to Kerbin from Eve? From like a low Eve orbit. <laughs> Technical fool, what's up? And this time with transcoding. I don't even know what transcoding is. Can you please inform me? Um, so there we go. I think, I think it's more than 2,000. If I'm if I'm parked at like 100,000 meters above the surface of Eve, I've, I have a feeling it's going to take more than that, um, more than that to get me back home. And also, I'm going to need a heat shield on this thing now. If we're actually if we're going to try to use this thing for reentry, <sighs> we're probably going to stick a heat shield on it. I I haven't played. I haven't tried re-entering the atmosphere with um, in 1.2 with this. Can it even re-enter anymore? I do have a YouTube channel. Check out right below the main screen, YouTube slash Everyday Astronaut. Um, I do post all these later uh, up on YouTube. So please subscribe there. If you missed an episode, you want to see the full development of this thing, there you go. Uh, this is actually really only the second, ver the second stream of this. So you're in it pretty fresh. Um, eventually, we're going to do a full mission. On mission days, I do wear the flight suit. Um, so a full mission means I'm actually going to try to run the whole thing. Take off from E or take off, um, take off from uh, Kerbin, all that, tr inject into Eve, do the whole mission, come back. That'll be a mission day when we finally get to that point where I'm trying. And I will wear the flight suit then. If you don't know what flight suit I'm talking about, uh, you haven't been paying attention, then have you? Transcoding. Twitch transcodes your videos at different quality levels so viewers can choose. That's right. Um, that's great. That's a good sign, right? It means somebody at some point or someone thought to push a button or a computer did or something. Um, that's great because I think you were having problems the other day, right? You couldn't even see me. So I'm glad. I am streaming this at 1080. So maybe that was extra hard. Maybe it didn't give anyone else the choice. So yeah, I love it. 3,500 kbps. Again, thanks to that Cedar Falls Utilities gigabit internet. I love it. So as anyone, uh, 2,500 would do you. 2,000-ish, 2,500 would be crazy extra. So, in other words, why don't I stick... I better err on the side of at least being able to get there. <laughs> and now with that heat shield, it did add a little bit. Um, I actually probably should have stuck this back on there. I bet it's not going to take much more fuel. Especially because we also have some RCS maybe we could bleed off. But we'll see. 2200 to 2300 so here at 22 guys I really would rather err on the side of this being too big though I hate the idea of being like oh it's fine and then yeah you know what we could also maybe do how are the puff engines these days in vacuum they're pretty crappy aren't they but it'd be nice just to have this be mono monoprop so we can do easy docking and stuff but maybe I'll just make sure this thing's the thing docking with that and this just tries to stay stationary or stationary if you're from the UK. Let's see. Let's go one notch bigger. I still have to put solar panels on this, so don't forget that. 2800. That's pretty healthy. That's pretty healthy, I think. Um, yeah, we could easily afford to throw some solar panels back on this guy. Probably don't need many. 5,000 for the two-way trip is perfect. Okay. Well, this is only going to be a one-way trip on this leg because this has to, this will ride on top of the space plane all the way to Eve. <sighs> Long burn time, 10 minutes. I don't even know if I'm that patient in life. Let's go ahead. I'm going to auto-strut this guy to parent part. Rep part. No. There we go. So I think that's going to be enough to get it. And I'm also going to still stick some of these on just in case. I hate, like, there's nothing worse than having a dead probe. Do I even need it to be a probe? I mean, I could dock to it dead, but then it's scary because if it translates at all, it could spin out of control and then I'm real screwed. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set this key binding to three. I'll forget that. I guarantee it. All right. I feel like that's plenty healthy, don't you? Does anyone know? I need some shoots on this thing if we're actually going to re-enter eventually. I might as well get this whole mission planned out. I don't even have a ladder on this thing either yet to get out. I better do that while we're at it. 
Because the reason this is pointing downward is so that it can enter out the mouth of the beast. Let's see if this is right. Nope, flip it. 180. Okay, I'm going to maybe, uh oh, maybe keybind that too. Um, I'll make that on, I don't know. I do need that to be, <laughs> if I don't put that on four, we're never getting that back. Okay, toggle ladder. There we go. Ladder, check. We're down to 2784, no shoots yet. Let's get those shoots on there. We'll do a drogue here, and then two of these radial mounts. Like that. 26. Yikes, OP. This is getting scary now. Okay, time to detach this. I'm actually going to reattach the rest of this up here. Open this guy up. Then give this guy a little detach. Also, if you guys are new to watching me, I don't use music while I stream. I encourage you to turn on iTunes, do whatever you want. I do that so I can easily post it back onto, uh, on YouTube later. And the big thing about that, I actually have a lot of copyright free music that I could pull into. But I don't know. Personally, I actually like when I'm watching a YouTube video or streaming and I can just choose my own music. Um, I know there's a certain exciting element sometimes about that. But um, yeah, I just don't for whatever reason. So feel free if you're watching, turn on your own music, have fun. Uh, you won't be interrupted by any of my music unless it's a break. Then you will. Uh-huh. Hey, why is it doing that? Oh, I... Crap. Oh, actually, this is good. I didn't mean for this to happen, but this is good. Yes, let me look at this. If this is the Delta V map. I've used a few different Delta V maps. Let me see which one you're pulling up here. Yes. But is Oh, and they actually updated it. I didn't realize that it's updated. I've probably been looking at the wrong one forever. So let me just kind of look at this real quick. So Eve... Let's see, 100, it's going to take 1,300 plus 80 plus 90. Yeah, then 950. Okay. Yeah, you're right. I think 2,500 or so is going to be plenty. So, yeah, I'm not too worried about it. I think that's good. Thank you for double-checking with me. I'm going to stick one of these right up here, though. Um, I'm also going to offset it a teeny touch and put a nice little... We're just going to put a separator on there instead of a... The right sized, come on. That looks wrong. This guy. Although we could actually attach it by that small one. Let's just do that. You know what I'm probably going to need in order to have this work though? I'm probably going to need um, a little bit of a few RCS pods just so that. Why is it doing this? Um, just so I can pull away from it cleanly. Is that actually connected to that properly? That does not look right at all. And it's not right. Trust your intuition. I hate, it's like, come on, do you not see that ball? Just go to your house. Uh, 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 no, <laughs> what is happening? All right, I'll try that bigger decoupler. See if that works. Uh -huh, uh, something like this. There we go. And then, like I said, in order to cleanly push away from this, I'm going to stick some some of these guys on there. And we can just push off nice and easy. That'll also help, too, when translating between the two craft as well. Let's auto strut this guy so it doesn't go anywhere. Okay, I think we're ready to stick this thing back in EVE orbit and see if we can't do the whole mission properly. Scary stuff here. At least that looks cool though, right? I mean, it's like it's got a little passenger. So fun. Looks like my staging might have got all thrown off here. I might have to fix a little bit of that before I totally commit to this. Sorry, I just want this to be nice and snug, but not too snug. Come on. There we go. And I'm also going to strut this guy up. Okay, so there's our tug to get home. That's just going to detach before we do our re-entry burn. 
Let me make sure the rest of this. Yep, that makes sense. Yep, that makes sense. Yep, that makes sense. I'm sure that doesn't matter. Uh, this does matter though. We don't want our shoots deploying randomly inside the capsule, I don't think. Maybe you do. Um, okay. I think that looks good now. Let's give this a go. I'm pretty excited. I think this will be, I think this might actually do an okay job, hopefully. Pressure's on. All right, let's get this thing going. All right. So, yeah, like I said, make sure after this, if you missed the beginning of this, or if you want to see the original development of this plane and the original uh, first successful entry EDL and a uh, successful ascent, go to youtube.com slash everyday astronaut. You'll find it there. That's not good. It's like a vestigial tail just flopping around in the dark. Um, I'm going to pop back here quick and make sure that's actually, I'm just going to manually strut it. It's snowing really hard there in Candanada land. Well, luckily for me, it's not snowing here. I think it's supposed to snow in about two weeks. So I guess I'll just probably, you'll have to be able to make fun of me then after that. But for now, I get to make fun of you. Ha ha. Actually, kind of like, I almost think it's, it's a slap in the face when it's freezing cold like this and not snowing. So maybe you're the lucky one. Okay. That should do. Let's do this. This will probably be, uh, I'll probably end up signing off here in about half hour, but um, yeah, let's make sure we, let's make sure we at least get through this. I want to make sure we can still do a successful EDL. Um, oh crap. I realized we took off those heat shields here and I'm pretty sure those are necessary for an EDL. Sorry. Let me, let me kick back in here quick. We learned that the hard way that those decouplers holding uh, all that together, the whole like plane together, <laughs> those tend to overheat really, really, really quickly on reentry. Like I said, Eve is just a dirty, dirty, dirty old planet right now. And it's so hard to not only, it's always been hard to get off of, but that's overcomable. It's not ever been this hard to even enter its atmosphere. Um, so if you're listening developers of if you're listening, uh, who is it? Curse that makes, I don't even know. Whoever makes this game, please make Eve a little bit more pleasant for EDL. It's just, the atmosphere is so nasty these days. Okay, do something like this, push it out. And like I said, I'm basically only doing this to protect this stupid decoupler right there. All that drama for that. All the Princess Leia ears for that. It's not even, here, I want it to kind of kiss this a little bit more. Who is that? Thank you for that follow. I really appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in. All right. Let me pop these guys. I'm going to push these guys a little forward too. I'm just nervous that they're going to like collide and those will end up like totally breaking off. And all look quite the fool. There we go. Like I said, we're just using those to protect... Um, those decouplers behind there. I'm gonna just nudge it in ever so slightly like this. Kissing that just ever so slightly. What's this and this? Are these good? Are these those? I don't want these to break off right away. <laughs> oh, yep, let's push these up to La La Land here. And then what's this and that? That's wrong, that's gotta be wrong. Oh yeah, no, that doesn't matter. That's that little tug. Okay, here we go. Entry, descent, landing. I finally got it over and over. Looked it up. Oh, sorry. I, no, I'm so sorry. You could, you could have, uh, you could have asked me at any time. I, I try not to do, uh, stupid whatever they're called, uh, acronyms. I, I try not to. But after saying it a million times, like an hour ago, I'm sick of saying, entry, descent, and landing. So yes, EDL has become very, very, very difficult on Eve. Um, yes. And for those of you still, if you're, if you're fresh here from Matt's feed. For now, we're still just in development phase. We are just cheating this into EVE orbit, making sure we can land and take back off. And then on mission day, when we actually do the full mission from Kerbin all the way to EVE and back and out, all that stuff, then, and only then, you'll see me wear a flight suit and that's when you know we're doing a mission. So first things first, let's make sure this can actually decouple and not just blow up. Oh, I better have that. Oh, please don't just like, oh, okay, that's not bad. All right, turn this on. Pull away. 
No comms. I keep forgetting that I need a comms network to make this thing actually work. Okay, well, whatever. Um, can I at least deploy these? Or am I going to be screwed? Okay, I can do that. It's weird that some things work and others don't. So what we're going to do is we're at least just going to park this. Get it away from this. Not that. Here we go. It's back away. Do I not have a Kerbal in here? I should. I don't. All right. Well, <laughs> geez. Let's see. Nightbot's not in here now. Speaking of which, getting night Nighty in here might be a good idea. Uh, can you please explain that? I'm so new to Twitch. I know that I've seen Nightbot pop up who does some cool things. Can you explain to me the advantages, how I do that, why I would do that? Um, yeah, that would be fantastic. I just don't even know. I'm still so new to all this stuff. Hey, when when Trude, you're going to Eve and maybe making it home. If only for its auto moderating functions. Is that so please if you wouldn't mind maybe I can look it up later, like Twitch how to use Nightbot. Um, but yeah, is there like a quick easy way to throw it into a chat room or something? Common chat robot that serves many functions. I like that. I like robots. These are good things. So far, you're speaking my language. I have had it answer me, and I've embarrassingly been like, thanks, Nightbot. And everyone's like, dude, that's a robot. But why can't we thank a robot? I'm going to I'm gonna pop this Nightbot.tv open just so I uh, remember to check it out later. Thank you. Thank you guys for the suggestions. Again, you guys are helping me so much with all this stuff. It's, it's all so new and very foreign to me. Shortcuts. Uh, for commonly repeated blocks of text, that's a great idea. I would like that. Okay, so first things first, let's decouple this again. And instead of trying to back away from it, we're going to use... Does anyone, has anyone ever seen this happen? Is it be, she's a pilot. Are we not controlling? For some reason, it won't let me do RC, my big giant RCS pods. Um... Watch, if I hit, okay, now it's working. Wait, which way am I going? Okay, I just wanted to pull away from that. But I also need to switch to this real quick and make sure, I mean, I don't need these, I don't think, because I have solar panels on it. I don't think it'll die, but I might as well make sure they're available, right? Okay, so now this guy's parked. We're going to pop back in here. All right. Oh, that's cool. I like that a lot. So you can just throw, you could easily throw in, um, yeah, I could easily throw up links to Instagram and stuff like that. I would really like that. Inspector, you want to be my first mod? I might consider that. Talk to me later. Whisper me. And let's, let's chit chat about it. I need to get some experience on how to mod, but if you feel like you'd be uh, up for the job and you feel like you're in here often, and so far, you've been an awesome, an awesome mission control guy. So, um, yeah, whisper me. Let's make that happen. Okay, so we're going to do our sixty-five thousand kilometer uh, periapsis deaccelerating burn here, our deorbit burn. Ian, you've also been awesome. You've also been in here a lot. That'd be great. I would. I love it. I mean, if you guys are willing to help out, fantastic. Okay, let's see here. Let's light these engines, turn off the main so we don't waste quite as much fuel. Here we go. We're going to lower this, knock this down to 65, I've found. So far, it's been, uh, I've had the best luck with that, so we're going to give it a try. If not, we can try a little steeper re-entry, but 65 so far. Oh, come on, get out of there. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. No problems. Throw up your Instagram URL. That's awesome. Hey, that'd be great. Yep, let's let's can let's get something going. Um, I would love to figure that out. So I really appreciate you guys stepping up and wanting to help out. Install BTTV for my browser. I'm not familiar at all with what BTTV is. Behind the Twitch T 
TV behind the Twitch vacuums? Has to be that. Gears going in. Inflate those heat shields. This is being obnoxious. Settle down, RCS. Do your job, but settle down. Wait, do I not have... I'm supposed to have RCS ports over here. See, this is what's weird. Like, it's not giving me any control right now. I feel like I've been having issues. I'm hitting... What the heck? Maybe I'm missing pods on this. Okay, well, needless to say, let's just get into some atmosphere and then we can use um, the control surfaces to actually properly orient us. Let's turn on those laser beams. There we go. Our aerodynamic force is overlaid. This should straighten us out by default. Actually, if I turn everything off and just let it go, the aerodynamic, built-in aerodynamics of this by having all these, I'm using them again as, as supersonic um, drag sh shoots, basically. Um, they're going to hold pretty good here for me. Better Twitch TV. More good stuff. No swearing, all caps. Sweet. That's awesome. A pr a, to prevent a link or click P to purge unclassy language, click B to ban. I like all these things. Like I said, you know, I'm so new to all this stuff, so you guys even giving me any advice is fantastic. I really appreciate it. All right. We're actually starting to hit the atmosphere here, so I'm going to not be uh, overzealous here and, and not have physics warp on. But let's see about where we're going to land. Hopefully, we're just trying to land somewhere. He Actually, if we land here, this is fantastic. This is pretty high up. Some of these mountains are like two, three, four thousand meters above sea level. And <laughs> any thousand meters is a massive amount of delta V savings in the long run. All right. Let's see if stuff starts blowing up here. Hopefully not. Because this is similar to our first iteration. But now we have that space tug ready to pick us up and, and save us. Let's see. These don't all seem right. Maybe they are. I'm a little nervous that we have something staged Im improperly and we're going to end up dropping something off. When you get a mod bot and mod set up some ground rules in the info box. Great idea. I do have some I do have some ground rules I think on my page. Um Yeah, but it's not very in depth. It's just sort of a general a general thing. Okay, here we go. Here's where stuff's going to get interesting. So I'm going to call these out. 2750. 2700. 2650. 2600. Speeding up our day acceleration. 2550. 2500. 2450. 2400. 2350. 2300. 2250. 2200. 2100. We're making it. 2000. 1900. 1800 we survived re-entry I believe normally that's the hardest part yep we made it and thank you for that follow uh by rat or something I can't read that little thing whoever you are thanks for the follow I really appreciate that okay turning these guys off we're gonna go ahead and quick save so we don't have to go through that boring stuff because it looks like we're gonna land in a great great little family friendly place now here's the next hard part is knowing how to blow these heat shields off um, oh, I found out that one time, actually, by dis by doing this, just getting rid of them like this, um, jettisoning them, there's a lot of explosions and scary stuff that happens. But it's actually the... Oh, look at that. It took off a bunch of stuff. Never mind. Never mind that. Yeah, for sure. I, I would do that any day. Yeah, I need to... I need to I mean, I, I don't know if DOS has any time to moderate at all. That guy is busy. So busy. Um, but he's the one that got me helped out with all this stuff. So he's he's the reason I'm here, really. So, um, All right. Let's try maybe going lower and then blowing these guys off here. I'm not sure if that's the right way to do it. Because believe it or not, this stuff ends up ripping wings off as well. So, and it used to be the magic number that we had found through trial and error was 20,000 meters. That's when things were not blowing up, um, or we had the, the least damage control. We're going to land in a nice family-friendly place. Oh, no, we landed in a bar. Running, some running streamers will probably be super glad to give advice. Oh, yeah, yeah, DOS, we, we chat once a week, 
um, on the phone, and he has just set me up with everything. He's given me his, let me tap into his whole knowledge base. The nicest dude. He really is. So, he's been so supportive. Um, yeah, so I have I go to him for advice so far, but I need to get all the advice I can get. All right, let's try blowing these off in this old typical manner. Three, two, one. Super clean. Did we even lose? Okay, we lost a few uh, Aelrions. I can't say that. Air, Aelrions. 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 Meh. Like I said, pronunciation. Not my forte. So this thing's flying like a little bit like a brick here for now because we did we lost quite a few, didn't we? Yikes. I better give these guys a little bit more authority here. Maybe they can help out. And these. That kind of sucks. We might have to go back and, and try a different point, revert to a different a different point and um or back to that quick save and see if we can get a cleaner separation of those things. Ale. Oh, that's like that's gonna help me. Phonetic spelling. Ailerons. Ailerons. There we go. Ailerons. Ailerons. Ugh. My wife has taught me how to pronounce things properly so many times it's embarrassing. I said uh, suppose supposedly with a B for so long. And uh, she taught me that that's not how you say that. The other one is, uh, I, used to, I used to say always, and I'm working on saying always with an A-L <laughs> instead of O. Oh, great. Look at that. We pitched up too quickly and ripped another wing off. So it looks like we're, let's revert to that quick save. I feel like that's going to be our best bet. Oh. So there. Let's try that. Uh, yeah, Maida, we were talking about you uh, getting some advice and also maybe helping moderate. Because I think we're to that point where we may need some of that. So far, the chat, I don't know, the Kerbal world has been amazing on Twitch. Your guys' community is amazing. Everyone's super supportive, super friendly. They all help out. Um, so I haven't obviously needed, and I don't have that many followers yet. So it's not like we need, we have that much traffic. But right now, we're doing great, and I really appreciate all those new followers. And again, for you, Mater or Matt, thank you so much for, for sending some people my way. I really appreciate that. So we're gonna try to find a cleaner place to separate here. Let's try 25,000. We'll just do some nice, easy, uh, a nice easy separation. Your dialect in your area taught you to say rum instead of room. Uh, same with, again, my, my wife's uh, mother, she says like hell and hail instead of like, or hell instead of hail, or bag instead of bag. Just kind of some funny things. Oh, we lost more that time. Okay, let's try it earlier. Um. <laughs> That's funny. Fur instead of fair. Uh, what's the other one? Oh, you want to know the weirdest thing about my area? I don't know why. I'm going to try this at 35,000. We're just going to keep trying a bunch of random numbers until we get a clean separation. And three, two, one. Well, lost a whole, a whole wing section, but we have... I'm also looking for symmetry, like, as long as we have the same ailerons and the same wings displaced, I think that's, we can deal with that, but I want it to be the same at least. Um, okay, so the weird one about where I'm from, for whatever reason, if you if you flip someone off, you'll hear someone say, uh, like, they'll be like, hey, that person fingered me. That's not the right word to say there. Uh, so remember the movie Freddy Got Fingered? I thought it was Freddy flipped some. Freddy got flipped off. I learned that lesson the hard way. I moved to Denver, Colorado for a minute in my life, and uh, I was with a whole group of people, like ten new friends. We're all hanging out, and someone uh, like honked at us and flipped us off. And I go, "That guy fingered us. You see that?" And everyone looks at me like, "What did you just say? Wh what?" <laughs> and I'm like, "What? I had no idea that that is not what you say in that situation." Um, so I learned. The, the very uh, funny way that that's not what you say. So now I say flipped off. Let's try 27,000. Worst one yet, maybe? I'd say not the best. Okay. Let's also try... Um, let's also try... I want to try jettisoning again, because that... We just got to find whatever separates this the smoothest. <laughs> 
Dude, I miss, I miss Freddy Got Fingered. I watched it again and it was just so ridiculous. I remember why I loved it. Hey, look at that, that might work. Uh-oh. What did we lose? Damage control. Ah, we lost one. Oh, that's probably why. Look at that. The coupler was getting stuck in that in that aileron. <laughs> aileron. Oh, you poor people. Tune in to twitch.tv slash everyday astronaut to hear a guy mumble through words and not be able to pronounce anything correctly. Hmm. Let's let's try one more time. I feel like we're getting close. <laughs> Furby, what's up? Thanks for uh, stopping into Mission Control here. Ian, you're right. The Kerbal community is great, but once someone in EJ's chat posted a link containing, well, oh, no. Okay, you're right. I will want Nightbot for some for for no links. You're right. Um, yeah, that would be very bad. I was worried I was going to get Rickrolled the other day or something. Check your latest post uh, on where? On, on Twitch here? All right. Let's see if we can do better. Jettison. Fairly clean. I can live with that. I wish I wish I had keystroked these, or like, whatever it's called, to be together. Hey, look at that. We have it. We're going to land with those things on the back. I can live with this. Although wait, we did we ripped off one. Okay, I I feel okay about that. I can live with that. We might just take off and everything with those girders attached or whatever they're called. I'm going to pitch up though. It's important to begin translating our vertical uh or downward Ascent into some horizontal velocity. Cool. I will definitely do Nightbot here soon. I think that's a great idea. Before I get trolled super hard by the ravages of the internet. Whitelist domains. Okay, cool. That's probably a great idea. I like this. Thank you guys so much for all your help and all your advice. I really, really, truly appreciate it. Okay, coming in nice and spicy, just the way we want. I might have to give these guys a smidge more control, so we can pitch up just a little bit harder. Not much. We're doing okay. Look at how high it is up there. See how I was talking about how we're landing in an area that's pretty mountainous and pretty high up? That's why. Hey, I'm going to turn off this one. How about that? Then I won't have that overcompensation over here. Yep, all it takes is one person to ruin a fun time. I I don't know how poisonous Twitch is, but it seems my experience has mostly been Kerbal and so far Photoshop and then watching some other people stream. But in general, it seems to be a pretty good community. Um, granted, I'm not watching too much like, you know, Call of Duty or Counter-Strike and stuff like that. I feel like that's probably where some of that uh, <laughs> nastiness could live. Oh, no, carbonaceous, don't worry. This thing, we've landed it and taken off and all that stuff many, many times. We've made it through the hardest part. But you know what worries me now is this mountain coming up. It'd be a great place to land. I hate when it says that. You are not stowed. Get out of here. And we're stalling. Yikes, coming into a mountainside at a million miles an hour. Crap. I should have quick saved. <sighs> Crap. Sorry, guys. Just, <laughs> just flip them a bird, a bird at them, and then kick them out. Kerbal's community is the penultimate example of, of gaming community. I would agree. Great. Now I have to try to deploy these all again. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I really, really should have quick saved after we had that smooth jettison. How are we doing? Damage control. No, that flip maneuver is all that killed us. I like that nice and quick. Yes, nice people. 
And the cool thing is it seems like people like know each other outside of it and everything. You know, it's 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 a small but friendly community. Um, just like the space flight community though too. Small, friendly, although sometimes scarily nerdy, like not sociable. Um, I've ran into people sometimes that are incapable of a handshake. <laughs> Let's let this kind of settle out for a minute before I... Uh-oh. Before I try to jettison this. Okay. Okay, damage damage report. Let's get going pro grade here. Looks like we have almost everything. This might be our best one. We're a little bit out of control now. Pulling a little bit of a top gun moment. I'm gonna fire up these engines. So in case we need to do a crazy pitch maneuver. Let's just try to hold radial. Come on. Come on, buddy. We are still somewhat high in the atmosphere. Hopefully this gets settled up before it rips a wing off. That's what I'm most nervous about. Maybe I'll try turning off stability control. Sometimes it'll just naturally settle. Because sometimes it's fighting itself. I say that and it doesn't seem to, although it seems to be going more and more nose down, see? Maybe it's not going above the blue line. It's not going above the horizon anymore. Here we go, settling down, I think. This is totally like what happened in Top Gun. Nope, 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 it got worse, it got worse. Much worse. We don't have much time. Oh, so KSP grew out of an, an uh, older community, so there's your nerd source. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Wait until Ferrum fixes FAR for 1.22, and that'll show you what aerodynamic failures are. Uh, give me a, give me a rundown on what that means exactly. Like I said, I've been living in a in a bubble as far as uh, Kerbal goes. So like, there's words that I just have no idea. Oh, Ferrum Aerospace. I know it's like a pack. It's like a mod, right? Where you can change that stuff. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. It makes the air more realistic. Goose! Goodbye, Goose. I loved you. You were like a brother to me. Um, uh, maybe? Jeez. This thing is pissed off. I'm tempted to revert to quick save again. Come on. Right there. Maybe I just need to fire up some engines. Nope. <laughs> Here we go, here we go. I wasted a whole crap ton of Delta V. But we're back at it again. So we're gonna get in the landing gear going. So I don't run into that whole problem again. I hate how it says that. More unforgiving than stock. I don't know if I can handle that at all. Trap is made out of cardboard and held together with chewing gum. I feel like that's already the case. I don't know if I need uh, <laughs> ferrum aerospace in my life right now. Okay, so we're out of our death spiral for now. But we did waste some Delta V getting out of it, which is nerve-wracking. <laughs> you were like a brother to me. Really? No. <laughs> Hey there, the DJ Technology. Thanks so much for following. Thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate that. Alrighty, let's make sure we have enough ability to pitch up. Should I quick save now, or did, do we fear that I? I do fear that I bled off a lot of, uh, or used a lot of uh, those engines there for a second. I'm also nervous about landing upwards on a mountain. Okay, I'm just trying to make sure I can, can I pull up to minus 10? I'm going to need to in order to survive this thing. Get those lights going so I have an idea. Okay. 
Pitch up, baby, pitch up. No! That might not be good. <laughs> I'm tempted to reload that quick save one more time just because of how much uh, fuel we burn trying to save it. Um, but at the same time, I bet you, honestly, I bet we can fly this thing out of here. I'm going to let it roll up to the top of this mountain because right now we're gaining free elevation. I'd be stupid to, to not let it treat me to that. Whoa, look at that shiny rock. Oh, such ADD. Literally. I do want to make it up here because otherwise the brakes will not work. I guarantee it. Actually, you know what? Screw it. We're not even going to quick save. Uh, I don't know. I would like to quick save on the ground, actually. I like how I enthusiastically just claim to do something. Um, <laughs> that's not far from the truth. They're, they're called redundant wings. Make sure that we can... Oh, why did I quick save? I have so few wings. <laughs> well, here we go. I appear to be missing an engine. This is going to be interesting, isn't it? Um, but why not? This is maybe the worst quick save I could have given myself. Oh my gosh. No lift. Oh great, this is awful. I'm just gonna, as soon as I can pitch up and go full blown um, radial out, I'm going to. So let's pay attention here. Oh, we're above a one to one thrust ratio. Let's point full radial out now and just climb it. Just fight it. This is weird. It's like flying a goat smothered in cheese, humping an LP tank. There we go. We're doing this, guys. We're doing this. I don't care what you say. As long as everything deploys correctly from here on out, we're in it. We ha we're gonna, we honestly have plenty of Delta V, believe it or not. I'm nervous that we're not, if we're not pointing straight up, we might run into some problems here. There we go. Okay. Wow, we're gaining, luckily we took off at 3,000 meters. That helps a lot. So here we go. Three, two, one, please clean deploy. Oh, that's just those. And just those, what am I doing? And just those. <laughs> Sloppiest stage deployment ever. Oh, let's get out of this. It's going to spiral to death. Oh my gosh, I forgot to drop so many things on our ascent. This, If this makes it, then we can do anything at this point. This is hilarious. You guys are seeing <laughs> the most miraculous uh, ascent out of EVE ever with the sloppiest moves known to man. No judgment though. So what I have to do with this thing, because it's so unstable, I can't, I gotta get up and coast a ways. Um, I can't do a smooth gravity turn, unfortunately. Trust me, I've tried. Um, but I go up to about 70. Like this. And then I use the remaining little bit of Delta V left over. Once the atmosphere is thinned out, then I pitch over, use that last little bit to start some horizontal velocity out of here. I open up that mouth. Oh. We pitch over. We start using those engines. Full beans. And deploy. Is it clean? It's clean! Here we go. We're on track, guys. I probably should have paid attention to trying to dock with our tug, but... Nobody's perfect, right? We'll worry about that later. So here's the thing. I don't want to go super far above. Let me make sure. Oh, why is it doing that? Stop. Don't use RCS right now. Or monoprop. Okay. We want to stay right about at 90. Nope. There's no air breathing engines that work on EVE, unfortunately. EVE requires... Um, EVE does require rocket-powered engines only. Which is crazy. So yeah, I'm using a space plane, but not using air breathing engines. I'm going to go up to 100k here. <laughs> Woo! 
Think about how much Delta V I gained with all that weight on la weight loss on landing. It's one way to look at it. It's definitely one way to look at it. So we're closing in on our apoasis. So I don't ever want to hit zero. So if I need to, I'll pitch up a little bit more. We're also slowly increasing our apogee here, apoasis. Did Eve, I feel like Eve used to be air breathing, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, but that one planet, the first moon around Jewel is air breathing. But I don't remember what that's called now. So we're probably going to have to circularize using RCS. That's gonna be my guess. I noticed that we're holding nine meters, nine meters per, or nine seconds away from Apoasis at all times. That's nice. We can actually kind of pitch in a little more. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We got this because RCS has a lot of Delta V left over too. So let's ditch this tank. I hope at least. Oh yeah, we better turn these guys back on. That was the sloppiest ascent ever. So if we don't make it into orbit, that's clearly why, but I think we're going to. I mean, look at our, we're almost out of the backside's atmosphere. <laughs> the backside's atmosphere. I'm not talking about tooting. All right. Yeah, we got this. As long as this yeah, we're fine. Here we go, raising our periapsis. This is beautiful. And that's our orbit flip, but we're not truly in orbit until this is above 90. 70, 80. 90. Oh, stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> Stupid thing. All right. Well, we are parked in 100 by 95 with just a third or so left of, of with RCS. We made it. We made it. With the heat shield and parachutes, we have everything we need to get home. So, boom, boom, boom. We even have a tug that can take us back home. That's feeling good, guys. That really feels great. So um, I might have to leave it here, guys. It's it's six o'clock. That's when I was planning to tune out here. I feel like this is a great place to tune off at. We we made a, a nice clean ascent. We have a tug ready to take us home. Um, I don't know when I'll play next. Maybe a little bit tomorrow. I can't promise. There might be a, a minute or two that I that I hang out tomorrow. But again, if you guys haven't checked it out already, make sure and check out um, any any tips. If you guys want a tip, you can. Help me afford this trailer that I'm going to stream in live on the road and go out and meet my patrons uh, When I'm on the road, so if you also want to become a patron member, you can help me out um, That helps me continue to do this and continue to go down to Kennedy Space Center and continue to uh, Produce fun content both on YouTube, but also my Instagram, which is my main thing So here we go everyday astronaut at Instagram follow me if you aren't already um, You'll stay on top of all the fun. This is this is my stuff this is what I like to do. Um, so this is where most of my effort goes in. All the streaming stuff is just for fun. But also a fun and easy way to support me would be at my shop. So everydayastronaut.com, uh, click on shop. You'll see shirts, all the prints of every picture I've ever done, and all that fun stuff. Super nice and easy. But yeah, I think this is a great place to end. Uh, I really appreciate you guys all coming in. And thanks to Matt for, uh, for coming in. I really appreciate you bringing your, your friends over here. You want to see uh, Mater doing a, a Phoenix Heavy launch from EVE? That'd be sweet. I would like that too. I'm super into that. Um, but yeah, I think, this is a, I think this is a great time to tune off. We got, a, we got our, our friend Wentrude parked up here in EVE, in the orbit of EVE at a 100 and by 95, a nice clean orbit. Um, ready to go back to Kerbin on a tug. Um, I think everything is fantastic. So... Um, thank you guys. If you aren't following, please click follow um, so you can see this, the rest of this stuff play out when we finally do mission day where we finally try to run it all the way through. I think it's going to be a really great time. Um, like I said, to Technical Fool and Ian, make sure and whisper me or, or hang out. 
Um, let's get, I want to work on that mod stuff soon. I think that's a really good idea before something crazy happens. But thank you guys all so much. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Like I said, hit me up on Instagram. If you're, if you want to continue helping to support me, Patreon, check out that trailer, all that fun stuff. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut. Burn out. Three, two, one, zero, seven, and liftoff.